In the corridor of Jiangzhou Hospital, Yi Chu looked pale and shocked as if she had been struck by lightning. He originally thought that his relationship with Zhang Lily was as strong as a rock, and the two had experienced ups and downs from their classmates in medical school to their common workplace, but they did not expect such a secret behind them. Zhang Lily's words, like a sharp knife, deeply cut Yi Chu's heart. Yi Chu and Zhang Lily, once admired lovers, are now in a desperate situation because of a betrayal. Yi Chu walked angrily to the bathroom. He wanted to see for himself who the third party was ruining their relationship. However, when he stood at the bathroom door, a mixed emotion suddenly welled up in his heart. He began to wonder, even if he knew the truth, what could he do? Is the rupture of a relationship only because of the intervention of an outsider? At the moment when Yi Chu was about to leave, the conversation in the bathroom made him angry. Guo Xiaokong, a surgeon at Jiangzhou Hospital, used his father's power to dominate the hospital. Yi Chu never thought that Zhang Lili would be entangled with such a scum. For a regular quota, she is willing to betray her feelings for many years, which makes Yi Chu feel extremely painful and sad. Guo Xiaokong's ridicule and insult aroused Yi Chu's innermost anger. He rushed desperately into the bathroom and punched Guo Xiaokong in the face. However, in terms of strength and figure, Yi Chu is obviously no match for Guo Xiaokong. Soon, he was knocked to the ground and brutally beaten by Guo Xiaokong. At this moment, the secret in Yi Chu's heart was mercilessly revealed. He is a child without a father, and the secret of his life experience has always been the greatest pain in his heart. As a result, his mother was expelled from the family, and he became what people called a bastard. This secret, he only told Zhang Lili, unexpectedly today has become a reason to be ridiculed. In this fierce confrontation, Yi Chu passed out in a coma, and the blood from his fingers inadvertently seeped into the white jade bracelet abandoned by Zhang Lili. This bracelet, once regarded as a valuable family heirloom by Yi Chu, has today become a witness to the breakdown of their relationship. Yi Chu's figure looks particularly lonely in this cold hospital corridor. He once thought that he and Zhang Lili could share the ups and downs of life hand in hand, but the reality gave him a heavy blow. Love is so fragile in the face of power and desire, and Yi Chu has completely lost trust and hope at this moment. In Yi Chu's life, an unexpected experience completely changed his fate. One night, when he was in a coma in Zhang Lili's rented house, he saw a man who called himself the ancestor of the Yi family and taught him countless knowledge such as medical martial arts, practice, strange door evasion, and so on. When he woke up, Yi Chu was surprised to find that there were no scars in his body and his mind was full of unprecedented knowledge. Just at this time, Yi Chu received a phone call from Bai Bing, and her cold voice revealed a bad feeling. Rushing back to the hospital, Yi Chu found himself involved in a trap planned by Guo Xiaokang and Zhang Lili, who falsely accused Yi Chu of plagiarizing medical records. In the face of Bai Bing's questioning, Yi Chu had no excuse and was eventually demoted to a nurse. Bai Bing, a well-known iceberg goddess in the hospital, has enviable achievements and noble temperament. Her decision made Yi Chu feel wrong but Yi Chu didn't give up. He decided to prove his innocence with his newly acquired knowledge. Yi Chu's new life begins. He worked in obscurity at the nursing station while secretly practicing his newly learned skills. In an accident, Yi Chu treated a critically ill patient with his own medical skills, which soon spread throughout the hospital and made everyone look at him with new eyes. At the same time, Yi Chu did not forget the framing of Guo Xiaokang and Zhang Lili. Using his newly acquired knowledge, he cleverly devised a plan to let the truth come out. The plot of Guo Xiaokong and Zhang Lili was exposed and they got the punishment they deserved. Yi Chu's fate was completely changed by an unexpected experience. He not only proved his innocence, but also showed everyone his ability. Bai Bing's view of Yi Chu also changed, and she began to re-evaluate the young doctor who had been misunderstood. Yi Chu's story tells us that sometimes the turning point of fate is only in the blink of an eye and what really determines our fate is how we face the challenges and how to make use of the resources in our hands. Yi Chu's experience is full of shock and contrast, which not only arouses the curiosity of readers, but also shows his tenacity and wisdom. No, no, no. Yi Chu, a top student from medical school, had to work as a nurse in the top third-class hospital in Jiangzhou due to lack of background and resources. The daily work is trivial and repetitive, from washing and feeding to dealing with the defecation and defecation of patients, which are supposed to be part of the work of nurses, but they have become his daily tasks. Although he is full of unwillingness, Yi Chu knows that his current situation is all due to the lack of sufficient power and money. 
He made up his mind that he must change his fate so that those who had looked down on him would eventually look down at his feet. One day, Yi Chu accidentally met Guo Xiaokong and Zhang Lili in the elevator, who were witnesses to the trough of his life. Guo Xiaokong's nose still left traces left by Yi Chu who had fought back, making Yi Chu instinctively want to avoid the dog couple. However, the other party seems to be enjoying Yi Chu's embarrassment, making no secret of ridicule and ridicule. Yi Chu chose to be patient. He knew that his current situation did not allow him to do anything radical. Just when Yi Chu was ready to swallow his anger, Guo Xiaokong refused to let him go easily. In the hospital hall, Guo Xiaokong loudly slandered Yi Chu, not only slandering him for plagiarizing medical records, but also revealing Yi Chu's background, calling him a fatherless bastard. The sudden humiliation made Yi Chu extremely angry, but he knew that if he fought back, he would have nothing. When Guo Xiaokong got carried away and openly insulted Yi Chu in front of everyone, Yi Chu's inner anger reached its climax. He almost fought back, but in the end he forcibly suppressed his impulse. He knew that his future could not be destroyed on impulse. Suddenly, at the end of Guo Xiaokong's voice, an incredible scene happened Guo Xiaokong instantly broke his head and the whole hall was in an uproar. This is beyond everyone's expectation, including Yi Chu. At this moment, Yi Chu realized that perhaps there is a real force in safeguarding fairness and justice. Although he did not fight back directly, facts have proved that evil is rewarded, not unreported, and the time has not yet come. This scene not only made Yi Choshin sigh, but also strengthened his determination to change his destiny. He knows that only when he becomes stronger can he truly control his own destiny and not be despised by anyone. And all this needs to be realized one step at a time from now on. On an ordinary afternoon, Guo Xiaokong encountered a series of ironic misfortunes. First of all, a chandelier from the ceiling suddenly fell and fell on his head. Although the chandelier was small, the blow was enough to make him miserable, kneeling on the ground and holding a headache. Seeing this, Zhang Lili hurried forward to ask, but was reprimanded angrily by Guo Xiaokong. When Yi Chu saw this scene, he couldn't help sneering, thinking that Guo Xiaokong had asked for it. Then an even more absurd accident happened. A nurse slipped and the alcohol flew out of her hand, hit Guo Xiaokong on the head and spilled it on his wound. Guo Xiaokong was devastated by the stinging pain of alcohol and rolled on the ground. Zhang Lili was furious with the nurse, but the accident had already happened and Guo Xiaokong had to be rushed to bandage the wound. Unfortunately, when Guo Xiaokong was about to take the elevator for treatment, an inadvertent moment, the elevator door accidentally clamped him. After a lot of trouble, the elevator suddenly lost power, which made his situation even more awkward. This series of misfortunes made Guo Xiaokong wonder whether he had really suffered the scourge. And Yi Chu, who is behind this, is secretly complacent. He secretly cast an unlucky charm according to an old mantra book, but the effect was so remarkable. On the other side, by Mirror Lake, Yi Chu ran into an emergency and a little boy accidentally fell into the lake. Without hesitation, he jumped into the lake and brought the child ashore. The crowd on the shore applauded his bravery, and the boy's family was even more grateful. The boy's grandfather, a magnanimous old man in tang clothes, expressed his deep gratitude to Yi Chu and tried to reward him with a bank card of 500,000 yuan. However, Yi Chuan refused the gift, indicating that she did not save people for money. During the conversation, Yi Chu relied on her intuition to feel that the old man seemed to be seriously ill, although the old man claimed to be in good health. After leaving, the old man's attitude suddenly changed from a kind uncle to an authoritative overlord. He ordered the middle-aged man around him, Zhao Yun, to thoroughly investigate everything about Yi Chu, because in his view, Yi Chu may be the turning point of his fate. On this day, the trajectory of Yi Chu's life may be changed because of an inadvertent attempt to save lives. Guo Xiaokong's series of misfortunes also make people sigh for the impermanence and mysterious power of fate. On a rainy evening, Yi Chu was covered with rainwater and returned home as if he had been fished out of the water. His mother, Qian Jinglin, a gentle Suzhou and Hangzhou lady, laughed and laughed at whether he had fallen into Mirror Lake. Yi Chu admitted helplessly that he really fell into the water while saving lives. After listening to Qian Jinglin, on the one hand praised his heroic behavior, on the other hand urged him to encounter similar situations in the future to be extra careful. Yi Chu knew in his heart that his mother, Qian Jinglin, was once a member of a large family, but because of the family's indifference, she led a difficult life with Yi Chu. At dinner, Yi Chu was about to hesitate. He wanted to ask about his father, but he saw his mother's face that was slightly tired because of the years, so he silently swallowed that sentence. 
Qian Jinglin changed the subject and asked about the relationship between Yi Chu and his girlfriend Zhang Lily, but Yi Chu concealed the fact of Zhang Lily's betrayal and didn't want her mother to worry. Qian Jinglin also offered to meet Zhang Lily, but Yi Chu felt a headache because their relationship had broken down. In the dead of night, Yi Chu lay in bed, recalling all kinds of things in the day, and his heart was full of unwillingness and anger. He was determined to make those who betrayed him regret. In this process, Yi Chu began to try to practice a variety of skills handed down by his ancestors, from medical skills to martial arts, and then to Qimen to escape armor. The next day, Yi Chu reported to the nursing station of Jiangzhou Hospital. Most of the nurses here are older, and he is the only one who is young. Soon after, he was sent to the 301 intensive care unit, where patients were said to be grumpy and difficult to serve. The attitude of the head nurse was cold and even sarcastic, but Yi Chu did not take it to heart, but went directly to Ward 301. At the moment of entering the ward, Yi Chu's eyes were attracted by an extremely sexy woman. She wears a light purple shirt and exudes irresistible charm. Her beauty made Yi Chui forget her task, and their eyes converged in the air. A woman's voice is cold, but she can't hide her beauty. In the relaxed and humorous conversation, Yi Chu can't help but be attracted by her charm, and the woman seems to be enjoying the game. Just then, the woman suddenly made a bold move, pushing the whole situation to the best part. Yi Chu was completely conquered by her charm at this moment. In a dark ward, a woman deliberately lowered her body, her neckline wide open, and the obvious temptation was in the air. Bei's teeth bit her lower lip, and her seductive eyes stared at Yi Chu, as if silently inviting him to join the game. In the face of such a scene, Yi Chu's cheeks were stained with a touch of blush. As a young man who had never been involved in the world, how could he bear such a sultry scene? What is even more embarrassing is that his body unconsciously responded. While Yi Chu was struggling to hide this sudden embarrassment, the woman suddenly opened her mouth, her voice soft and waxy, like an electric current passing through his whole body, making him feel numb all over. This woman, no doubt a master, easily made Yi Chu uneasy. As a result, Yi Chu turned and fled the ward, blaming himself, thinking that as a man, he was scared and fled by a woman, which was really undignified. However, Yi Chu has to admit that this woman can be called first class in terms of appearance and figure. In his limited knowledge, only Bai Bing can match it. The difference is that Bai Bing is always expressionless and cold, while this woman is passionate and charming, and every action can easily arouse the hearts of the people, which can be described as a man's natural enemy. Yi Chu took a few deep breaths and tried to calm himself down. He knew that if the female patient could not be handled properly, his days in the nursing station would be numbered. So he plucked up his courage and stepped into the ward again. When the woman saw Yi Chu appearing again, a trace of surprise flashed in her eyes, and then she looked charming again and asked him if she had not seen enough. Yi Chu's cheeks were red again, and he hastened to explain that he had come to examine the wound on her leg. The woman was stupefied at first, then smiled to show her understanding, but Yi Chu had a bad premonition in her heart. When Yi Chu squatted down to check the wound on the woman's leg, he could not help sighing that the sky was jealous of the beautiful woman. The wound is 10 centimeters long, like a centipede crawling over, which makes people feel distressed. He asked about the origin of the woman's wound and was even more distressed when he learned that it was caused by a car accident. The woman revealed that she was about to undergo another operation in an attempt to remove the scar so as not to leave permanent regret. Just then, a middle-aged male doctor came in with several interns and asked about the woman's health. The woman urgently asked the doctor if there was any way to remove the scar, but the doctor's answer was undoubtedly cold water, saying bluntly that modern medical technology could not meet her needs. Just when the atmosphere was dignified, Yi Chu suddenly opened his mouth and put forward the idea of using the Mao Shan mantra. The remarks immediately caused displeasure among doctors, thinking that Yi Chu was talking nonsense and even threatened to expel him. Yi Chu was helpless and was about to leave when the woman suddenly stopped him. This scene undoubtedly surprised everyone, and the subsequent development aroused people's curiosity about the unknown. Before Yi Chu could answer, Dr. Wang said, Ms. Lin, don't listen to his nonsense. Mao Shan Mantra is a feudal superstition and can't help you remove scars at all. The woman looked at Dr. Wang and asked faintly, Are you Yi Chu? Dr. Wang said with a smile, Ms. Lin, don't joke with me. How can I be Yi Chu? Since you are not Yi Chu, if I ask a question, what qualification do you have to answer? The woman was high above, suddenly emitting a huge aura, her eyes were extremely sharp. Brush. Dr. Wang broke out in a cold sweat on his forehead. 
Yi Chu looked at the woman in surprise. He found that at the moment, the temperament of a woman is very similar to that of Bai Bing, but the hostility is a little more serious. He couldn't help wondering, who on earth is this woman? What is that Mao Shan spell you just mentioned? The woman ignored Dr. Wang and looked at Yi Chu curiously, with a smile on her face, which was very different from the expression of the last second. Yi Chu replied that the Mao Shan spell is a very mysterious secret art, which has many magical effects. People who do not understand it will think that it is a futile superstition, and those who really know it will regard it as a magic skill. Can the Mao Shan spell really help me get rid of the scar completely? The woman asks again. Yes. Yi Chu is very sure. In that book of Mao Shan mantra, there is a kind of mantra called removing scar charm. Once the scar removal sign is applied, it can remove the scar in a very short time and restore the skin as before. How long will it take to remove the scar? The woman thought that if it was a year and a half, but if it was three or five years, wouldn't she be able to wear a short skirt to show her legs? Yi Chu thought for a moment and said, 10 minutes. What did you say? The woman looked at Yi Chu in amazement. Yi Chu mistakenly thought that women had been disrelished for a long time and said, if I try harder, maybe five minutes will be fine. The woman froze and couldn't believe it. At the same time, several interns behind Dr. Wong laughed one after another. Yi Chu, who are you kidding? Five minutes to completely remove the scar, do you think we do not understand medicine, or do you have immortal skills? I think you're talking nonsense. Dr. Wong is a medical expert. There is nothing he can do. What can you do as a small nursing union? Mao Shan Charm? Ha ha. Why didn't you say you know Dragon and Tiger Mountain tricks? I really know the secret of Dragon and Tiger Mountain, but it has no effect on eliminating scars. Yi Chu said solemnly. In the inheritance of the ancestors of the Yi family, there are many mysterious things, including the secret art of Dragon and Tiger Mountain. The intern said with a smile. Ha, ha. If I had just asked you if you knew Feng Shui, would you also say that you know a little bit? Yi Chu nodded. Well, I also know a little about feng shui. Since you are so good, why do you have to copy Guo Xiao's medical records? I didn't plagiarize. Yi Chu glared at the intern who spoke. If there is no plagiarism, then why are you assigned to the nursing station? The intern sneered. Yi Chu was speechless, blushed and said, Anyway, I didn't plagiarize. Guo Xiaokong set me up. Okay. Dr. Wang, a little impatient, looked at Yi Chu coldly and said, it's none of your business here. Get out. Wait a minute. The woman opened her mouth again, looked deeply at Yi Chu and asked, can I trust you? Hearing this, Yi Chu knew that his chance had come. Look directly into the woman's eyes, Yi Chu said seriously, you can trust me, I will never let you down. So when can you treat me? Anytime. Then do it now. The woman said to Yi Chu, if you can help me remove the scar completely, I will reward you heavily. When Dr. Wong heard the conversation between the two men, he hurriedly advised Ms. Lin that medical treatment is not a game, but it should not be messed up. Yi Chu is just a small nurse. He doesn't know anything. The woman asked Yi Chu, if it can't be cured, will there be any damage to my body? Even if it can't be cured, there won't be any damage. Yi Chu said. The woman said to Dr. Wong, you heard me. There is no harm if you can't cure it. Why not try it? But. But do you have an idea? Dr. Wong shut his mouth at once. Since you can't help it, why stop Yi Chu from treating me? Just because he's a nurse? Or do you have ulterior motives? At last, the woman's voice suddenly became cold again, and her eyes looked at Dr. Wong fiercely. Dr. Wong was startled and said hurriedly, Ms. Lin, don't get me wrong. I'm just worried that Yi Chu can't cure you. I have no other ideas. It's best to have no other idea, otherwise, I won't spare you. The woman turned her head, and a charming smile appeared on her face. She said in a delicate voice, little brother, help me treat it. Turning a face is faster than turning a book. Yeah. Yi Chu nodded gently and was secretly vigilant that this woman was moody and must not be offended, otherwise she would not have good fruit to eat. He first took a bowl of water, then held out his right hand, drew his index finger and middle finger together and kept stroking at the bowl, as if he were writing something, chanting words in a low voice, and everyone only vaguely heard something like an urgent order. Magic stick! One of the interns behind Dr. Wong hummed coldly, and several other interns also showed disdain. In their view, to save people from illness, they should give injections, take medicine and perform surgeries. As for the Mao Shan charm, it is all a trick. In three minutes, 
Yi Chu stopped, gently smeared the water in the bowl on the woman's suture wound, and said, Wait another two minutes, the scar should be eliminated. Puff and intern can't help laughing. Yi Chu, I don't see it. You are quite able to pretend. I think you might as well stop being a nurse and go to Hangdian as a walk-on. With your acting skills, you can get ahead sooner or later. Another intern said, if you just smear a few drops of water on things that can't be solved in medicine today, lie to ghosts. Dr. Wang also doesn't believe that after so many years as a doctor, he has never heard of any Maoshan spell that can cure a disease. Otherwise, what would a doctor do? Time goes by minute by minute. Two minutes is almost up. Suddenly, only heard the woman exclaim, the scar is disappearing, the scar is disappearing. Dr. Wang raised his eyebrow and didn't believe it, but he still subconsciously looked at the woman's calf. All of a sudden, Dr. Wang's eyes stared like a bronze bell, with an expression of seeing a ghost. The interns behind him are stupid, too. This, how is this possible? Even the thread that was originally stitched on the wound did not know where to go. If you look at a woman's calf, the skin is as smooth as jade, as dazzling as white porcelain. This. What on earth is going on? Several interns who laughed at Yi Chu were stunned. Dr. Wang was also amazed. It was the first time he had seen such a situation in so many years as a doctor. How did you do that? Dr. Wang couldn't help asking. Didn't you see it all? Yi Chu said. Is it really a Mao Shan spell? Dr. Wang is still a little unbelievable. Yi Cho Jung said, First of all, the Mao Shan charm is not a feudal superstition, but a magical secret. But. Is there no end of it? The woman interrupted Dr. Wang impatiently and said, It's none of your business here. You can go now. Ms. Nalin, I have to go now. Please call me if you need anything. Before leaving the ward, Dr. Wang glanced at Yi Chu, his eyes chilly. Outside the corridor, several interns were very angry. Teacher, Yi Chu Mingxian is fooling people, and such scum should be driven out of the hospital. You are right, a mouse shit spoils a pot of soup. If Yi Chu stays in the hospital, it will bring great disaster to our hospital sooner or later. Teacher, you are Ms. Lin's attending doctor. If something goes wrong with Ms. Lin, you will be held responsible. Shut up. Dr. Wang scolded and asked calmly, Do you know where Guo Xiao is? When I came to the ward, I saw Guo Xiao go to the nursing station. An intern said, I see. Go back to work first. Seeing that Dr. Wang did not look good, several interns dared not say more and left in a hurry. Dr. Wang stood where he was for a moment and went to the nursing station. In the ward, the woman held her cheeks in her hands and stared at Yi Chu with her big watery eyes. Yi Chu just felt uncomfortable. I wonder how I can thank you for helping me so much. How about I make a promise? The woman blinked her big eyes and her eyelashes trembled. Yi Chu blushed and said hurriedly, Ms. Lin, please don't do this. What do you want from me? Shall I show you again? The woman quickly stooped down, and for a moment, a piece of white jumped in front of Yi Chu. Yi Chu hurriedly looked away and felt his heart beating violently. This woman is really a grinding leprechaun. Come on, it's so easy to be shy, haven't you seen your girlfriend before? The woman asked curiously. I haven't seen it. The woman is surprised, the girlfriend has not seen, the female patient has always seen it, right? I've never seen it. Yi Chu said solemnly that I am a medical practitioner with good professionalism. Really? Then why do you want to see mine? The woman asked with a smile. Yi Chutin said quietly, you didn't show it to me on purpose. The woman said, do you look at me instead of them because I am prettier than them? Yi Chu's face became even redder. At this point, he admitted that this woman was indeed the most charming woman he had ever seen. Any look in her eyes could make people feel excited. I am afraid that as long as she was a normal man, she could not resist the charm of a woman. All right, I'm done teasing you. The woman put away the banter on her face and said, Yi Chu, make a formal acquaintance. My name is Lin Jing. Exquisite? Yi Chu took a look at the woman. She was really exquisite, but... Hey! Yi Chu sighed. Why are you sighing? Do you think my name doesn't sound good? The woman asked, puzzled. I think it's more appropriate for you to call Lin Demon. Yi Chu regretted after saying this sentence. What a cheap mouth! What if a woman gets angry and doesn't ask herself to be a nurse? However, the woman was not angry, but smiled and said, You are so smart, others call me Lin Leprechaun. Really? Yi Chu Dao. Actually, it is not accurate to call you a leprechaun. 
Why? Because you look better than a leprechaun. The woman giggled, looked at Yi Chu interestingly and asked, What do you want me to do? Just say it. Yi Chu was a little embarrassed, did not expect his own little trick, was suddenly seen through by the woman, said, Ms. Lin, I want to be your nurse. This is it? Lin Jingjing has some surprises. Yeah. Yi Chu nodded heavily and said, I was originally a probationary doctor in surgery, but I was framed and transferred to a nursing station. If I can't be your nurse, then I won't have a job. Lin Jingjing was surprised and said, With your ability, even if you lose this job, it's no big deal. I love this profession and I want to be a great doctor. Yi Chu said solemnly. Lin Jing carefully looked at Yi Chu, with appreciation in his eyes and said with a smile, I like men with dreams very much. From now on, you can be my nurse. Do I need to sign a contract? I'll get the contract. Yi Chu ran out of the ward quickly. This little man is kind of interesting. Lin smiled delicately, took out his hand, called his assistant and said in a commanding tone, Xiao Jia, there is a nurse named Yi Chu in Jiangzhou Hospital. Check it out. I want to know all about him in three minutes. All right, boss Lin. A sweet female voice came from the phone. Less than three minutes. Lin Jingjing received the information, read it carefully, frowned slightly, and was born out of wedlock. Girlfriend was robbed? And copy other people's medical records? This kid, there are a lot of stories on him. Knock knock there was a sudden knock on the door, interrupting Lin's exquisite thoughts. Looking up, I saw a young doctor coming in from outside. Who are you? Hello, Ms. Lin. My name is Guo Xiaokong, a surgeon in this hospital. I heard that you are going to hire Yi Chu as a nurse? As Guo Xiaokong spoke, his eyes glanced stealthily at Lin's delicate chest. What do you want to say? Lin asked exquisitely. I want to tell Ms. Lin that you can't ask Yi Chu to be a nurse. Ms. Lin, you don't know. Yi Chu was originally a surgical intern. He didn't do his job went to work foolishly, and copied my medical records. He should resolutely refuse to use such irresponsible people, otherwise. Yi Chu came back before Guo Xiaokong had finished his words. Why are you here? Yi Chu sank at the sight of Guo Xiaokong. You don't care where I am. Guo Xiaokong's attitude is very arrogant. Lin exquisitely said with a smile, Just now Dr. Guo told me that you didn't do your job, you were fooling around at work and you copied his medical records, and your work was extremely irresponsible, so I didn't ask you to be a nurse. Yi Chu said angrily, Guo Xiaokong, why are you always targeting me? Because I don't like you, is that enough? Guo Xiaokong also said to Lin Jingjing, Ms. Lin, please consider my suggestion carefully. What if I have to ask Yi Chu to be a nurse? Lin smiled exquisitely. Guo Xiaokong was stupefied and said, Ms. Lin, if you insist on asking Yi Chu to be a nurse, once something goes wrong, the hospital will be irresponsible. If something really goes wrong with me, will your hospital be held responsible? The smile on Lin's delicate face suddenly disappeared, and a huge aura emanated from her. At this moment, she is like a queen at the top. Guo Xiaokong had a shock in his heart. He had never seen such a huge aura in the Dean, and he could not help wondering, what on earth was the origin of this woman? Yi Chu. Lin gave an exquisite cry. Yi Chu looked at Lin's delicacy. Lin Jingjing said, Today, my sister will teach you the truth of being a man. In this world, if you don't take a step back, others will also take a step back. Very often, if you take a step back, others will think that you are easy to bully, and they will gain an inch. This is the truth that people are good enough to be bullied. Ma Shan was ridden. So, it has to be hard when it's time to be hard, especially as a man. Yi Chu was thoughtful. Do you understand what I'm saying? Lin Jingli went on to ask. I see. Then what are you waiting for? Yi Chu took a deep breath and looked up at Guo Xiaokong coldly. This look in his eyes made Guo Xiaokong feel very uncomfortable and roared, What are you looking at? You bastard. Bang. A slap suddenly fell on Guo Xiaokong's face. No. 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 You. How dare you hit me? Guo Xiaokong stared at Yi Chu in disbelief. For a long time, in his eyes, Yi Chu was a loser, but now. I put up with you and let you go, not afraid of you. Yi Chu said coldly. I'll kill you. Guo Xiaokong raised his fist and was about to do it. Don't you dare touch him? Lin exquisite cold voice sounded, said, Dare to move Yi Chu, I want your life. Guo Xiaokong turned his head and saw that Lin's delicate eyes were cold and unemotional, 
and he didn't seem to be joking at all. Who are you? Guo Xiaokong asked quietly. I'm the one you can't mess with forever. Lin Exquisite Apricot stared. Get out. Domineering. Guo Xiaokong hesitated for a moment, then unwillingly unclenched his fist. He didn't dare to do it easily, in case he really couldn't annoy him, until he got a clear idea of Lin's delicate identity. Yi Chu, I won't just let it go. You wait for me. After Guo Xiaokong put down a cruel word, he quickly left the ward. The ward is finally clean. Thank you, Sister Lin. Yi Chu said gratefully. He was moved by Lin's exquisite care of him just now. It's just a small thing. You're welcome. Lin asked with a delicate smile. How does it feel to have slapped Guo Xiaokong? It was great. Yi Chu only felt that the slap just now vented all the depression in his heart. Then Yi Chu asked Lin Jing, Sister, do you think I'm cowardly? No, you're not weak. You're too kind. Lin Jingjing said, You have just entered society, you do not want to cause trouble, and you are afraid of causing trouble, because you know that you have no money, no power, and no background, so every time you encounter something, you will retreat again and again. You would rather suffer some grievances than offend others. I understand how you feel. But I don't appreciate it. Lin's exquisite words turned around and said, as I said earlier, people are good at being bullied, Ma Shan is written, and a foolish concession does not solve the problem. Guo Xiaokong's bullying you again and again is the best proof. Remember what I said, if a man wants to stand firmly, he must be ruthless. Yi Chu said with a bitter smile, I know all the truth, but... It's just that you think you have no background and can't afford to piss them off, do you? Yeah. Yi Chu nodded. Lin exquisitely smiled and said, why don't you think about it? You are not afraid to wear shoes barefoot. If you are a little tough, do they really dare to fight with you? Yi Chu Jung. In this society, the more rich and powerful people are, the more afraid they are of death. If you work hard with them, they must be pussy. Lin Jingzi said, besides, you are not completely without background. What does it mean? From now on, I will be your backer. Who dares to bully you, I will kill him. Yi Chu also does not know whether what Lin Exquisite said is true or false, in short, the heart is warm. Thank you, sister. I don't like verbal thanks. Can you give me something practical? Lin exquisitely squinted his narrow phoenix eyes, looked at Yi Chu charming and said, give me a kiss. Ah! It's too direct. Yi Chu's disgraceful face turned red again. Ha! Ha! Give me the contract. Lin smiles exquisitely. Yi Chu hurriedly handed the contract and pen to her hand. Got it. Yi Chu finally heaved a sigh of relief. In this way, there is no reason for the nursing station to drive him away, which also means that he can continue to work in the hospital. As long as he stays in the hospital, he will have a chance to return to surgery. By the way, can you cure my leg with the Maoshan spell? Lin Jing asked. Yi Chu shook her head and explained that there is indeed a magical bone grafting technique in the Maoshan spell but it's a pity that I haven't learned it yet. Besides, your leg has already been operated on, so you just need to rest. But I don't like lying in a hospital bed. I'll push you downstairs to the garden later. Oh, really? Yi Chu, I find you are so sweet. If only you were my boyfriend. Lin exquisitely looked at Yi Chu, his big watery eyes blinking, charming with a trace of playfulness. Here we go again. Yi Chu can't stand it. Why does this woman always like to flirt with herself? Sister Lin, I'll go to the canteen and get you something to eat. Lie still. Yi Chu fled the ward awkwardly. Qian Jinglin has been thinking about Yi Chu's marriage these days. She happens to be absent from work today. After finishing the housework, she went to the hospital and wanted to discuss it with Zhang Lili. The parents of both sides met and settled the matter of Zhang Lili and Yi Chu. As soon as she came to the door of the inpatient department, she saw Zhang Lili come out with a young male doctor on her hand. The male doctor put his arm around Zhang Lili's waist, and the two looked very close. Qian Jinglin is a very traditional woman. Seeing this, I feel a little unhappy. Just then, Zhang Lili also saw Qian Jinglin, frowned and asked, Auntie, what are you doing here? Lili, I'm here to see you. Qian Jinglin came straight to the point and said, Looking for me? Do what? I'd like to discuss with you and meet your parents sometime to settle the matter between you and Yi Chu. Zhang Lili frowned more tightly and asked, Auntie, didn't Yi Chu tell you? Tell me what? Qian Jinglin wondered. Looks like Yi Chou Jun didn't tell you. 
Yi Chu and I have broken up, said Zhang Lili. You broke up? Qian Jinglin looked stunned. When did it happen? How come I never heard Yi Chu mention it? Then Yi Chu must not have told you that he copied Dr. Guo's medical records and has now been assigned to work as a nurse at a nursing station. What? Qian Jinglin looks very pale. As a mother, she is most worried about the future of Yi Chu. Can Yi Chu still become a regular employee? Qian Jinglin asked nervously. Even if you are going to lose your job, you still want to become a regular employee? In your dreams? Guo Xiaokong sneered around. Old woman, you gave birth to a good son, copy my medical record, but also beat me, really outrageous. You said Yi Chu beat you? That's impossible. Qian Jinglin didn't believe it at all and said, Yi Chui is kind to others and has never hit anyone before. Is there a misunderstanding between you? Misunderstanding, my ass. Guo Xiaokong pointed to his swollen left face and said, Old woman, open your eyes wide. This is what my son did. Zhang Lili also said, Auntie, I can testify that it was Yi Chu who did it. Xiaokong's father is the vice president of the hospital, so it is impossible for Yi Chu to become a regular worker in his life. Qian Jinglin instantly pale. Yi Chu is her greatest hope, but now. No way. Don't let your son lose his job. Qian Jinglin bent over and tried to squeeze out a smile on her face and said to Guo Xiaokong, Dr. Guo, it's all Yi Chu's fault. I will educate him well when he gets home. You have plenty. Can you give Yi Chu a chance for my sake? Look at your face? Guo Xiaokong spit in Qian Jinglin's face and scolded, What are you? Is your face valuable? Dr. Guo, please forgive me. Yi Chu is not sensible. I apologize for him. Bang. Before Qian Jinglin finished her words, Guo Xiaokong slapped her in the face and scolded, an inferior person, also worthy of my forgiveness? Qian Jinglin covered her face, cast a look of help to Zhang Lili, and said, Lili, after all, you are in love with Yi Chu, please beg Dr. Guo for me. Zhang Lili said coldly, I have made a clean break with Yi Chu. Whether he is dead or alive has nothing to do with me. Qian Jinglin looked at Zhang Lili in disbelief. At this time, Wo Xiaokong said with a gloomy smile, Old woman, as long as you get down on your knees and apologize to me, I will give Yi Chu a chance. Splash! Qian Jinglin did not have the slightest, knelt on the ground, for the future of her son, her personal dignity is nothing. But unexpectedly, Yi Chu came out from the inpatient department and happened to see this scene, and his eyes turned red. No, no, no. Yi Chu, like a runaway wild horse, rushed over and grabbed Guo Xiaokong by the throat. Don't you dare bully my mother, you want to die. Yi Chu roared loudly. Qian Jinglin is his dearest person in the world, and he will never allow Qian Jinglin to be bullied. Bang! Guo Xiaokong kicked Yi Chu in the stomach, but did not kick Yi Chu. On the contrary, the strength on Yi Chu's arm was so great that Guo Xiaokong was unable to work hard all over. Yi Chu, kill me if you dare. Guo Xiaokong said angrily. You don't think I dare? Yi Chu exerted his hands, and all of a sudden, Guo Xiaokong's face flushed and it became extremely difficult for him to breathe. Zhang Lili said hurriedly, Yi Chu, let go of Xiao Kong. Get out. Yi Chu drank impolitely, at this time in his eyes, Zhang Lili and Guo Xiaokong are birds of a feather. You. You. Zhang Lili, angry and anxious, hurriedly said to Qian Jinglin, Auntie, please persuade Yi Chu that if something happens to Xiao Kong, Yi Chu will pay for his life. Qian Jinglin also responded at this time, got up and grabbed Yi Chu's arm and said, Chu Er, let go of Dr. Guo. Mom, he bullied you, I will never let him go. Yi Chu is stubborn and strong. Dr. Guo didn't bully me. I volunteered. Let go of Dr. Guo. I won't let go. Qian Jinglin was so anxious that she was about to burst into tears and said, Chu Er, don't you even listen to me? Yi Chu looked back to see the tears in her mother's eyes and trembled in her heart, which made her unwilling to let go. Ahem. Guo Xiaokong coughed for a while, then regained his breath and said gloomily, Old woman, you see, in broad daylight, your son actually wants to kill me. Do you think such a person can still stay in the hospital? Zhang Lili also glared at Yi Chu and said angrily, Yi Chu, you have grown up. Ah, Xiao Kong is your offense. Apologize to Xiao Kong. Apologize, my ass. Yi Chu glared at Zhang Lili and said in a cold voice, How does my mother treat you? You know in your heart that you bullied my mother with Guo Xiao Kong today. Are you still human? 
I didn't bully my aunt. Ask if you don't believe me. Qian Jinglin played around and said, Chuer, Lily did not bully me, I volunteered. Mom. Yi Chu, did you hear that? I didn't bully her, it was the old woman who wanted to kneel. Guo Xiaokong said, How dare you fight me? I'm not done with you. Yi Cho Jung was about to speak, but she was dragged behind him by Qian Jinglin. Dr. Guo, I'm sorry. Yi Chu Gong did not know the situation, mistakenly thought that I had been wronged, so I was impulsive, but also asked you to more Haihan. This money is a little something for me, and it will be regarded as a mental damage fee for Dr. Guo. Qian Jinglin took out a thousand yuan from her pocket, bent over and humbly handed it to Guo Xiaokong. Bang! Guo Xiaokong slapped Qian Jinglin in the face. Dr. Guo, you! Bang! Another crisp slap in the face. Is that all you have? Send a beggar? Guo Xiaokong puffed up and said arrogantly, I tell you, old woman, even if you give me one million, I will not spare your son. Don't you dare hit my mother? I think you're really tired of living. Yi Chu clenched his fist and wanted to rush up with Guo Xiaokong desperately with anger on his face. Chuer, don't fool around. Qian Jinglin grabbed Yi Chu's arm. Mom, this son of a bitch bullied too much and dared to bully you in front of me. I'm not today. Shut up. Qian Jinglin was strict not only Yi Chu, then accompanied a smiling face to Guo Xiaokong said, Dr. Guo, I am really sorry, I went back to persuade Yi Chu. Another day with him to your door to apologize. Qian Jinglin never felt humiliated, but she could put up with anything for the sake of Yi Chu's future. To prevent Yi Chu from being impulsive again, she tugged Yi Chu hard and wanted to leave here early. Unexpectedly, as soon as the mother and son turned around, Guo Xiaokong picked up a brick from the flower bed next to him and patted it directly on Yi Chu's back. With a click, the brick broke in half. Guo Xiaokong was immediately dumbfounded and said secretly, Has this guy practiced an unbreakable body? Why is there nothing wrong at all? On the other hand, Yi Chu was furious in his heart. Guo Xiaokong hit him so hard that if the brick had been slapped on the back of his head just now, he might have died. At this moment, what Lin exquisitely said to him quickly sounded in his mind. Remember what I said, if a man wants to stand firmly, he must be ruthless. Cut. Yi Chu turned around, grabbed Guo Xiaokong's throat with incredible speed, and then suddenly threw Guo Xiaokong to the ground while the latter had not fully reacted. Bang. Guo Xiaokong hit his head on the cement floor and immediately broke his head. This scene scared Zhang Lili silly. Guo Xiaokong is 1.9 meters tall and weighs 200 jin, but Yi Chu is like grabbing a chicken and lifting Guo Xiaokong effortlessly. Why is he so strong? Zhang Lili's face was shocked, and before she could stop it, she heard Yi Chu say to Guo Xiaokong, Sister Lin was right. Ma Shan was ridden and good people were deceived. I made concessions in exchange for your intensification. I remember just now, you hit my mother with this hand, right? Yi Chu stared at Guo Xiaokong's right hand. What do you want to do? Guo Xiaokong drank angrily and dared to touch me. Do you want to die? Yi Chu stepped hard on Guo Xiaokong's hand. The action is fierce. Just be decisive. Click. A sound of bone fracture sounded. Guo Xiaokong's right finger bone all broken, instantly flesh and blood blurred. Ah. Guo Xiaokong screamed with pain. I can bear it if you bully me, frame me, abuse me, crowd me out, or even take away Zhang Lili, but I can't stand it if you bully my mother. Yi Chui grabbed Guo Xiaokong's hair, lifted Guo Xiaokong up, and then kicked Guo Xiaokong on his knee. Splash! Guo Xiaokong knelt on the ground. Apologize to my mom. Yi Chohan sounded. No way. Bang! Yi Chui slapped Guo Xiaokong in the face and apologized. You want me to apologize to that old woman? Dream! I won't apologize if I die. Guo Xiaokong is very tough. In that case, it will kill you. Yi Chu quickly broke Guo Xiaokong's arm with two fists, followed by lightning kicks on Guo Xiaokong's knee. Click. Two crunches, broken kneecaps. Ah. Guo Xiaokong exclaimed in his mouth, struggling to get up, but his limbs were all broken and he couldn't make any effort at all. Bang. Yi Chu stepped on Guo Xiaokong's face again and said in a cold voice, Guo Xiaokong, don't you want to apologize? That's enough, Yi Chu. Zhang Lili woke up from the accident and said angrily, you've done a terrible thing. Wait for prison. If you hurt someone, you will go to jail. What about the dead? 
A killing appeared on Yi Chu's face, and his foot slowly moved away from Guo Xiaokong's face and finally stopped on Guo Xiaokong's throat. Then, step on it suddenly. Yi Chu's right foot was just about to step down when it suddenly sounded. Yi Chu hurriedly stopped his feet, looked up and saw Bai Bing coming quickly from not far away, his face cold. For some reason, Yi Chu actually panicked in his heart. This feeling is like a pupil doing something wrong and being caught in the act by the teacher. Seeing Bai Bing, Wu Xiaokong seemed to see the straw and shouted desperately, Director Bai help, Yi Chu wants to kill me, please help me. Zhang Lili also took the opportunity to say, Director Bai, Yi Chu is crazy. He wants to stop him quickly. Let go of Dr. Guo. Bai looked at Yi Chu coldly and said, Director Bai, listen to me. Let him go. Bai Bing said in an imperative tone before Yi Chu finished his words. Unexpectedly, it was her tone that aroused Yi Chu's strong dissatisfaction. You are not my boss now, so why should I let people go? Bai Bing, angry and anxious, roared, don't you want to stay in the hospital? With regard to the medical records, Wu Xiaokong and Zhang Lili framed me together. If you don't investigate clearly, you will send me to a nursing station. It doesn't matter if you don't stay in such a hospital. Yi Chu made up his mind that even if he could not be a doctor, he could not starve to death with his own skills. Bai Bing suppressed her anger and persuaded Yi Chu, although I am not your boss now, I am also your teacher. After all, I took you for a while when you were on probation. If you still recognize me as a teacher, you will listen to me and let Dr. Guo go. After studying medicine for so many years, you finally got a doctor's diploma. Did you give up so easily? Are you worthy of your mother when you do this? Bai Bing's last words, like a heavy hammer on Yi Chu's heart, turned around and saw tears all over Qian Jinglin's face. For a moment, Yi Chu felt extremely guilty. Mom! Chuer, let Dr. Guo go! But! Mom already knows that he's an asshole, and you did the right thing to hit him, but it's not worth it to pay for such an asshole. Qian Jinglin's words were like a wake-up call, which calmed Yi Chu down instantly. Yeah, it's really not worth paying for a jerk like Guo Xiaokong. Guo Xiaokong, listen to me. I will keep you alive today. If you dare to bully my mother again, I will certainly kill you. Yi Chu took away her feet, supported Qian Jinglin and said, Mom, let's go. Halt. Zhang Lili stood in front of Yi Chu and said, You beat Xiaokong like that, do you still want to go? A good dog is not a dog. Get out of the way. Yi Chu looks bad. I have already called Vice Dean Guo, and none of you are allowed to leave here until he comes. Zhang Lili, do you want to die? Yi Chu, when things come to this point, I advise you to be honest. Xiao Kang lost his limbs by you. If you are sued, you will spend the rest of your life in prison. Hearing Zhang Lili's words, Bai Bing noticed that Guo Xiao Kang was bleeding all over his limbs. It's over. We're in big trouble. Bai Bing said quickly, Yi Chu, take your aunt and go as far as possible. Director Bai, what do you mean? Zhang Lili glared at Bai Bing and said, Yi Chu beat people fiercely and seriously injured Xiao Kang. If he leaves, who will bear the responsibility? Will you take it? I'll take it. You? Zhang Lili looked at Bai Bing in surprise. Bai Bing said, When I was in the medical department yesterday, I already said that if Yi Chu makes a mistake again, I will take responsibility for him. What's your relationship? Why are you responsible for him? Zhang Lili had a bad taste in her heart and said secretly, is it true that Yi Chu is having an affair with Bai Bing? What is the relationship between me and Yi Chu? It's not your turn to care. Yi Chu, take Auntie away. Bai Bing exclaimed. Director Bai, I'm leaving. What are you going to do? Don't worry about me. I have a way. Yi Chu was very moved in his heart. Bai Bing not only helped him, but also prepared to take responsibility for him. I really don't know whether to say this woman is good or stupid. But as a man, how can you let a woman bear all this for him? Director Bai, thank you for your kindness. I took the taxi. I don't need you to take responsibility for me. Yi Chu said. I'm doing this for your own good. Bai Bing said hurriedly, will Vice Dean Guo spare you if you beat Guo Xiaokong like this? If you get caught, you'll go to jail. Guo Xiaokong's father is executive vice dean, and he can be regarded as a respectable figure in Jiangzhou. He has a lot of contacts. If you don't leave, you won't be able to leave. Director Bai, I know what you said, but I'm not afraid of him. Yi Chu has made up his mind that the worst thing is that the net is broken. 
As Lin said, Barefoot is not afraid of wearing shoes. He has nothing to worry about. Bai Bing continues to persuade Yi Chu, have you thought about your mother? What will she do if you go to jail? Do you have the heart to leave her alone? Thank you, Director Bai. Qian Jinglin opened her mouth at the right time and said, thank you for taking care of Yi Chu. As his mother, I really appreciate you. It's just that he is a man and a man. If Yi Chu doesn't even take care of this, he doesn't deserve to be my son. But aunt, Yi Chu is still so young. If he goes to prison, his life will be ruined. Director Bai, you don't have to worry. Chuer won't go to jail. Although I don't have any skills, I can protect Chuer. Qian Jinglin is resounding, and her words are full of absolute confidence. Bai Bing wondered that Qian Jinglin was just an ordinary woman. Where did she come from? She looked at Qian Jinglin carefully for a while, but felt more and more familiar with it, and there was a sense of intimacy in it. Auntie, haven't we met somewhere before? Bai Bing asked suddenly. Yeah, I saw it once. Qian Jinglin said with a smile that when Yi Chu went to report in surgery on the first day, I sent him here, and he said hello to Director Bai at that time. So that's it. Bai Bing was about to speak when a roar came from behind. Who hit my son? Looking back, I saw a fat-bellied bald middle-aged man, with several security guards, storming out of the inpatient department. Uncle, you are just in time. Xiao Kong is injured. Zhang Lili said hurriedly. Guo Dajung ran to Guo Xiao Kong, squatted down and asked eagerly, Xiao Kong, how are you? Is the injury serious? Dad, help me. I'm useless. What? Guo Furious looked carefully and found that Guo Xiao Kong's limbs were all broken. In a moment, there was a killing opportunity on his face, growling, who did it? He did it. Zhang Lili pointed to Yi Chu and said angrily to Guo, uncle, it was he who hurt Xiao Kong. Even if Heavenly King Laozi comes today, he can't save you. Guo angrily stared at Yi Chu with resentful eyes and roared at the security guards, what are you waiting for? Give me a waste. Bai Bing said in a hurry, Vice President Guo, Yi Chu is one of our surgeons. Can you give me a face? Guo angrily glanced at Bai Bing and said, my son is also a member of your surgery. Why don't you protect my son? Bai Bing was suddenly speechless. Director Bai, Today I will only pursue the responsibility of this boy. I hope you will not stop it. Otherwise, don't blame me for not giving you face. Guo said angrily to the security guards and scrapped him for me. Wait. Vice Dean Guo. These are the security guards of the hospital, not your private goons, Bai Bing said quickly. You have no right to order them to hit people. Ridiculous. I am the executive vice dean. I can order anyone except the dean, including you. According to the hospital management regulations, no one in the hospital can abuse his power. Don't talk to me about that useless stuff. I just want to avenge my son now. You guys get in there. Seeing that several security guards were about to start, in a hurry, Bai Bing stood in front of Yi Chu and shouted, I see which one of you dares to do it. These security guards also knew Bai Bing and were instantly in trouble. Vice Dean Guo, what should we do? A security guard asked. Guo angrily stared at Bai Bing and said, Director Bai, do you really want to be my enemy? Vice Dean Guo, you misunderstand. I'm not trying to be your enemy. I just want to remind you that as a leader of a hospital, you should pay attention to your image and order security guards to beat people. Then why didn't you stop him when he hit my son? Guo roared, no matter who it is today, it's impossible to stop me from avenging Xiao Kong. You guys, get rid of that kid. If anything goes wrong, it will be borne by my Guo rage alone. When it comes to this, several security guards no longer have concerns. Director Bai, please get out of the way, or don't blame us for being impolite. A security guard said. Yi Chu also said, Director Bai, get out of the way. I can still handle these guys. But. Director Bai, please believe me. Yi Chu's face has strong self-confidence. He has digested a little bit of inheritance, although only a little bit, but enough to deal with these security guards. So. You be careful. Bai Bing hesitated for a moment and pulled Qian Jinglin back to one side. Yi Chu faced several security guards alone. Several security guards also stared at Yi Chu, clenched their fists, ready to shoot. Suddenly, with a bang, a Maibok rushed in from outside the gate and stopped in front of Guo's fury with a gorgeous tail. The door opened and a middle-aged man came down from the cab. Seeing the middle-aged man, Yi Chu felt a little strange. 
Why did Zhao Yun come? At the moment of seeing the middle-aged man, Wo Dazu directly left Guo Xiaokang, quickly greeted the middle-aged man and asked respectfully, Mr. Zhao, what brings you here today? Zhao Yun glanced at the scene, his face did not change at all, said faintly, I will do something. Mr. Zhao, why do you have to come in person? If there's anything you need to tell me, I'll be sure to take care of it for you. Guo nodded angrily like a lackey. You? Zhao Yun then took a straight look at Guo's anger and said, Can you do what the Dragon King ordered? Dragon King. Hearing the name, Guo was furious and shocked. At the same time, the doubts are getting worse. Why did the Dragon King send Mr. Zhao to the hospital? Is there a big shot in hospital here? It shouldn't be. If there is a big shot living in Jiangzhou Hospital, as the executive vice president, he must know it very well. Just then, Zhao Yun walked up to Yi Chu and said, Dr. Yi, we meet again. Hello, Mr. Zhao. Yi Chu is very polite. Dr. Yi, are you free now? Zhao Yun asked. I'm afraid not. Yi Chu pointed to the security guards and said, they are going to kill me. Zhao Yun looked up and glanced sharply at the security guards. All of a sudden, the security guards seemed to be targeted by the tiger, and their hearts trembled and retreated a few steps. They saw the murderous spirit in Zhao Yun's eyes. This man definitely had blood on his hands. Guo Duwei, what's going on? Zhao Yun asked in a deep voice. Guo replied hurriedly, Mr. Zhao, Yi Chu has abandoned my son, and I am going to avenge him. Your son? Zhao Yun glanced at Guo Xiaokong on the ground and said, he is not dead yet. What revenge do you have? As soon as these words came out, everyone froze. Guo Duwei did not understand the meaning of Zhao Yun and asked, Mr. Zhao, what do you mean? Huh? Zhao Yun said, Dr. Yi is a friend of the Dragon King. At the behest of the Dragon King, I specially invited Dr. Yi to your house. What? Is he a friend of the Dragon King? Guo angrily looked at Yi Chu in disbelief. As far as he knows, the Dragon King's friends are all old men in their twenties, and they are also the kind of bosses who will cause an earthquake in Jiangzhou as soon as they stomp their feet. Yi Chu is only in his early twenties and is only a probationary doctor. How can he be a friend of the Dragon King? Is there something wrong with this? What, you suspect I'm lying to you? Zhao Yun looked a little unhappy, pointed to the Maibok and said angrily to Guo, if you don't believe it, you can see for yourself. It's the Dragon King's special seat. Mr. Zhao is joking. How dare I doubt you? Guo stole a glance at Maibok's license plate as he spoke angrily. Zhang A88888. A unique license plate. This is the Dragon King's ride, no doubt. Guo began to feel a little frightened in his anger. Dragon King unexpectedly sent personal bodyguards, opened a special seat to pick up Yi Chu. This treatment is not low. What is the relationship between Yi Chu and the Dragon King? Are you really just friends? Zhao Yun said, Do you mind if I take Dr. Yi to see the Dragon King now? Nothing matters to me. Guo Dewei dare not to say that he has an opinion. Despite his being the executive vice president of Jianzhou Hospital, he is nothing but bullshit in front of the real boss. It's best if you don't have an opinion. If you have any, come at me. Zhao Yun's face glowed ferociously. Guo was angry with a thump in his heart and felt uneasy all over his body. He hurriedly accompanied his smiling face and said, Mr. Zhao, even if you give me a thousand courage, I dare not have a problem with you. It's for the best. Dr. Yi, please. Zhao Yun took the initiative to open the door for Yi Chu. See this scene. Guo angry eyelid jump. This is the treatment of the boss Ah. I want to take my mom with me, okay? Yi Chu said. Zhao Yun glanced at Qian Jinglin and nodded, of course. Yi Chu helped Qian Jinglin into the car and said to Bai Bing, Director Bai, thank you for today. I'll treat you to dinner another day. Seeing that Yi Chu was about to leave, Wo Xiaokang said hurriedly, Dad, how did you let them go? Stop Yi Chu and kill him. Shut up. Guo angrily glared at Guo Xiaokang, then nodded and said, Mr. Zhao, take care. Zhao Yun carried Yi Chu and her son away. Only then did Guo exhale a long breath and straighten the rocker. Guo Xiaokang was angry and asked, Dad, how did you let Yi Chu get away? Don't you want to avenge me? Guo said with a bitter look on his face, I'm afraid we have to admit defeat in today's matter. Why? Because he is a friend of the Dragon King. Is that what this is about? Guo Xiaokang said angrily, Who is the Dragon King? Why are you so afraid of him? Is he better than King Laozi? 
Guo sighed angrily and said, In Jiangzhou, the Dragon King is heaven. Yi Chu said, Mom, I'm sorry to have wronged you today. You silly boy, what are you talking about? Qian Jinglin Road, you have encountered so many things in the hospital that you have kept it from me. If you hadn't gone to the hospital today, how long were you going to keep it from me? I just don't want you to worry. Listen to scolded words of advice, don't hold on. If the hospital cannot survive, then another hospital, as for Zhang Lily, she has changed, is no longer the kind girl before, it is good to share. Yeah. Mr. Zhao must have some business to see you, so I won't keep you. I'll get off at the front. After the car stopped, Yi Chu helped Qian Jinglin out of the car. Thank you for your trouble today, Mr. Zhao. Qian Jinglin said politely. Auntie, you're welcome, it's just a trifle. Zhao Yun is also very polite. Qian Jinglin also told Yi Chu to come back early. I'll wait for you to go home for dinner. Today, my mother will make you your favorite Mapo tofu. I understand. After the car started, Yi Chu said sheepishly, My mother is like this, rather verbose. I'm sorry, Mr. Zhao, to make you laugh. That's good. Good? Yi Chu took a puzzled look at Zhao Yun. The latter was silent and concentrated on driving. Silence all the way. The atmosphere in the car is a little depressing. Yi Chu wanted to stop talking several times. Twenty minutes later, Zhao Yun suddenly said, Dr. Yi, there must be a lot of doubts in your mind. Right. Yi Chu did not deny it. Ask what you want to ask, and I will tell you what I can say. Who is the Dragon King? Yi Chu asked when she opened her mouth. This problem has been holding him back all the way. Dragon King is the king of the underworld in Jiangzhou. He used to be an expert on the tiger list. Zhao Yun continued, in fact, you and the Dragon King have already met. Is that the old man in the Tang costume with you yesterday? Yi Chu asked. Right. It's him. When Yi Chu saw the old man in Tang costume yesterday, he felt that the old man did not look like an ordinary person. Now it seems that his guess is not wrong. The Dragon King is his real name? Yi Chu asked again. No, it's just a title. Zhao Yundao, the Dragon King's real name is Long Qianchu, and he is called the Dragon King in the rivers and lakes. I see. Excuse me, Mr. Zhao, what is the relationship between you and the Dragon King? Yi Chu is a little curious about the identity of Zhao Yun. I'm the Dragon King's bodyguard. Then you must be very good at Kung Fu? Zhao Yun smiled but did not answer. The car drove into the downtown area and then entered a secluded mountain road. Yi Chu looked out of the window and asked, Are we going to Yunwu Mountain? Well, the Dragon King lives in Yunwu Mountain. Yi Chu was shocked. In the center of Jiangzhou, there is a peak 500 meters above sea level, called Yunwu Mountain, which has pleasant scenery and beautiful environment. In the early days of the founding of the People's Republic of China, this is a park, and later developed into a top-rich area, only the top dignitaries on Jiangzhou are qualified to live in Yunwushan. In 15 minutes, exquisite villas with Chinese style appear in the line of sight of Yi Chu, scattered in the shadow of green trees, quiet and distant. The car drove all the way to the highest peak and finally stopped in front of an antique villa. Dr. Yi, we're here. Zhao Yun said. Yi Chu nodded and got out of the car and saw four guards standing at the door of the villa, each with a sharp figure and sharp eyes. The breath of these four guards is very similar to that of Zhao Yun, but the breath is much weaker than that of Zhao Yun. Brother Zhao! Seeing Zhao Yun, the four guards shouted respectfully. This is Yi Chu, a guest invited by the Dragon King. Zhao Yun pointed to Yi Chu. The four guards glanced at Yi Chu and hurriedly stepped aside. Dr. Yi, follow me please. Zhao Yun leads the way. Yi Chu stepped into the gate, and a courtyard covering an area of several hundred square meters appeared in sight, with pavilions, fish ponds and rockery, and planted all kinds of strange flowers and plants, which tasted like a summer resort. In the middle of the yard, there is a stout sycamore tree, at least a hundred years old, with luxuriant branches and leaves. Under the tree, there is a stone table. The stone table is covered with rice paper. The Dragon King is practicing calligraphy. When the Dragon King is practicing calligraphy, he doesn't like to be disturbed, so take your steps gently. Zhao Yun whispered a warning. Yi Chu nodded. When the two men went to the Dragon King, Yi Chu stretched out his head and saw a few words written on the Zan paper to put an end to the affairs of the king and win his name before and after his death. Poor Bai happened. When the pen goes, the snake can penetrate the back of the paper. 
Between the pen and ink, there's an invincible spirit of killing and cutting. The word is a good word, but it's a pity. Yi Chu suddenly made a sound. What a pity! The Dragon King asked faintly. Unfortunately, it's too murderous. Bang! The Dragon King dropped his brush, looked up, and his eyes fell on Yi Chu. In an instant, Yi Chu had the feeling of being targeted by an unbeatable beast, and his hair stood on end. Seeing this, Zhao Yan hurriedly said, Yi Chu, don't apologize to the Dragon King. You know calligraphy, too? The Dragon King asked without waiting for Yi Chu to apologize. Have a smattering of. In the inheritance of the ancestors of the Yi family, there is a lot of knowledge about calligraphy. You said just now that I was too murderous. Did you think I was in the wrong mood when I was writing? The Dragon King asks again. This word was written by Shin Shiji, who lived in Shinjo when he was frustrated. In his sea, he expressed the grandeur of killing the enemy and serving the country and establishing fame. However, a pitiful white occurred, expressing Shin Shiji's depression, pain and anger that he had no way to report to the country. And your writing is full of silver iron hook and murderous spirit, which is diametrically opposed to the peace of mind of the author, but it is full of the spirit of swallowing thousands of miles, which reminds me of a poem by Cao Cao, the old horse in the stable still wants to run a thousand miles, and the martyr has a strong heart in his twilight years. The Dragon King stared at Yi Chu, his eyes as deep as the abyss, without saying a word, but the huge momentum on his body still existed. Yi Chu was so nervous that his forehead was oozing with cold sweat. Two minutes later, the Dragon King suddenly laughed and said, Yi Chu, you are very good. Hearing this, Yi Chu finally breathed a sigh of relief. Then, the Dragon King asked kindly, Yi Chu, I asked Zhao Yun to invite you. Did I disturb your work? No. That's good. Dragon King put away the smile on his face and solemnly said, Yi Chu, please come here, there is one thing, I would like to ask you to help. What's it about? Yi Chu asked. I'd like you to help me with my illness. The Dragon King said, I'm dying. Seeing that the Dragon King was ruddy and full of spirit, he didn't look like he was dying at all. He hurriedly said, Dragon King, don't joke, I think you are in good health. I'm not kidding. I'm really dying. The Dragon King looks serious. I am only a young doctor, and I am still settling accounts during the probationary period. If you are really seriously ill, I can't cure it. Yi Chu is dying of regret. If he had known such a thing would happen, he wouldn't have come here no matter what he said. At present, this old man is the boss of the underworld in Jiangzhou. If he can't be cured, he may even put his life on the tower. I'm sure you can cure me. The Dragon King said. Yi Chu said with a bitter smile, saying that you may not believe it, and I don't believe in myself. Leaflet, you are a young man. Young people should have confidence in themselves. The Dragon King then smiled and said, Do you know why I am looking for you? Yi Chu shook her head. He felt very strange that so many famous doctors were not invited. Why did the Dragon King invite himself as a nobody to treat him? It shouldn't be. You're out of your mind. The Dragon King seemed to be aware of what Yi Chu was thinking and asked with a smile, Do you think I'm out of my mind? I dare not. In fact, the main reason why I invited you here is that when we met yesterday, you asked me if I was sick. Do you remember? I remember. Yi Chu could not help slapping himself. If he had known this, he should not have been cheap yesterday. The Dragon King said, Over the past nine years, I have visited famous doctors, and no one has seen that I am sick. Only you have seen me once, and you can see that I am sick. So, I think you can cure me. Yi Chu said with a bitter smile, Dragon King, to tell the truth, yesterday I was casually saying. As soon as you say it casually, you can see that I am sick, which shows that you are an excellent doctor. Extraordinary, my ass. If it were that good, I would still be assigned to the nursing station? Yi Chu made up his mind that the disease could not be cured. Dragon King is not an ordinary person. Once there is something wrong with the treatment, he may not know how to die. Although Yi Chu's dream is to be the greatest doctor in the world, she must have a small life. My life is gone, and I'm talking about a fart dream. Think of this, Yi Chu said, Dragon King, you think highly of me, I am just a small probation doctor, just today, I have been assigned to the nursing station to work as a nurse, maybe in two days, I will get out of the hospital. I really can't see your illness. You'd better ask someone else to be wise. What are you? Reject me? The smile on the Dragon King's face gradually disappeared. Yi Chu was silent. Do you know what happened to the people who rejected me in the past? How's it going? 
Zhao Yun, you tell him. Zhao Yun looked at Yi Chu and said, I threw all the people who rejected the Dragon King into the river to feed the fish. His Yi Chu took a breath, turned white with fear, and said, Dragon King, don't scare me, I'm timid. I didn't scare you. No one has dared to refuse me for many years. The Dragon King stood with his back to Yi Chu and said, I invited you here because I think you have the ability to cure me. As long as you can cure my illness, I can give you endless splendor, and you can walk sideways in Jiangzhou from now on. If you can't cure me, the voice of the Dragon King suddenly stopped. If you can't cure it, will you kill me? Yi Chu asked nervously. Are you afraid of dying? The Dragon King asked suddenly. Afraid. Yi Chu thought, as long as it is an individual, it will be afraid of death. Since you are afraid of death, try your best to cure me. Because I'm afraid of death, too. Hearing the words of the Dragon King, Yi Chu knew that he had no way out. He must cure the Dragon King. Otherwise, my life is in danger. Let me give you a checkup first. Yi Chu said. Are you willing to treat me? Asked the Dragon King. Nonsense, if you don't want to, you will die. Dare I not? Yi Chu felt for the first time that doctors are a high-risk profession. The Dragon King laughed and said, Lobular, are you scared? No. Yi Chu is a dead duck with a hard mouth. The Dragon King laughed and said, Zhao Yun did not lie to you. He threw all the people who rejected me into the river to feed the fish, but none of them was a doctor. Yi Chu suddenly had the feeling of being tricked. Dragon King rode. The people I kill are all the people who should be killed. Doctors save lives, save lives, and kill them. Dragon King. To tell you the truth, I don't know anything about your illness, and I'm not sure if I can cure it. Yi Chu said. The Dragon King said with a smile, Yi Chu, if you try your best to cure me, I will not blame you. It can only show that my fate is exhausted, and God will accept me. Let me give you a checkup now. Good. The Dragon King sat down and asked, What do you need me to do? Just listen to my arrangement. Yi Chu finished, staring at the face of the Dragon King, careful observation. Yesterday, when he saw the Dragon King, Yi Chu had an intuition that the Dragon King was sick, and very sick, but the Dragon King denied it at that time, and he did not look carefully. After staring at the Dragon King for a while, Yi Chu's brow gradually frowned. The Dragon King has a ruddy complexion and bright eyes. Only from his facial expression, he doesn't look like a sick person at all. It even gives people the illusion that the Dragon King is healthier than a normal person. Strange. Yi Chu muttered in his heart, and then said, Dragon King, give me your right hand. The Dragon King held out his right hand. When Yi Chu held the pulse of the Dragon King's right hand, he was frightened, as if he had held a piece of ice. The Dragon King's arm was so cold that it seemed to have been frozen in the freezer. A cold deep into the bone marrow penetrated the palm of the hand, and Yi Chu could not help but shudder. Not only did he feel sorry for the old man in front of him, I really don't know how the Dragon King got through all these years. Close your eyes and feel your pulse carefully. Yi Chu found that the Dragon King's pulse beat smoothly and showed no sign of illness at all. Yi Chu frowned again and said, Dragon King, give me your left hand. The Dragon King handed his left hand to Yi Chu again. The situation is diametrically opposed to the right hand. Dragon King's left hand is very hot, like a piece of burning charcoal, holding in his hand, palm burning. Yi Chu feels his pulse again. Oddly enough, the Dragon King's pulse is still stable and there is no sign of abnormality. How did this happen? Leaflet, do you see anything? The Dragon King asked with a smile. Let me see. Yi Chu frowned and thought for ten minutes in place, then suddenly said, I know. What do you know? The Dragon King asked urgently. You are terminally ill and live for less than seven days. Life expectancy is less than seven days. Zhao Yun's face changed greatly and snapped, Yi Chu, do you know what you are talking about? If you dare to talk nonsense again, be careful that I will be rude to you. Shut up. The Dragon King looked up and glared at Zhao Yun, and then said to Yi Chu, Zhao Yun's temper is like this, don't be like him. You just said that I live less than seven days. Have you seen the cause of my illness? Yeah. Yi Chu nodded. What's the cause? Zhao Yun asked. In his opinion, so many famous doctors cannot see the cause, what can Yi Chu see? Yi Chu replied, if I read it correctly, Dragon King, you are very poisonous. As soon as these words came out, the Dragon King was slightly moved. Zhao Yun was stupefied at first, and then he could not help exclaiming, Yi Chu, 
How did you see that? Yi Chu said that this strange poison, which is very rare, exists in Miao and Xinjiang, and the world calls it demagogic poison. This time, even the Dragon King can no longer be calm. Sure enough, I did not find the wrong person, so many medical experts did not find out the cause, and you only looked at it for a while and found that I was poisoned and awesome. The Dragon King then asked, What else do you see? Yi Chu said solemnly, Dragon King, now I'd like to ask you a few questions. I hope you can answer them truthfully. Okay, you ask. After you were tricked, you didn't have any physical abnormalities at first, and you only waited for half a year before you began to show symptoms, right? Yes. At first, I didn't have any symptoms, but half a year later, I had unbearable abdominal pain during the day and went to the hospital for examination, but nothing could be checked out. Yi Chu nodded and said that demagogic poison is not an ordinary poison, but also a mysterious magic. It is recorded in the annals of Yaozhou that the Yi people have demagogists, whose secret skills are unknown to people. Moreover, demagogue poison is generally hidden in the blood. Ordinary medical methods cannot be detected at all. You are quite right. Zhao Yun took me to many hospitals at that time, but they didn't check it out. Yi Chu continued to ask that demagogic poison lurked in your body for half a year before you began to show symptoms. At first, you had unbearable abdominal pain during the day, and then you had unbearable abdominal pain at night. Is that right? Yes. Later, you began to be afraid of the cold, especially the cold, as if you were in an ice cellar every day, right? Yes. Dragon King. Even if it is dog days, I have to roast the stove and cover the quilt when I sleep. This situation has been with you for three years, and three years later, your body has a completely opposite situation, becoming very afraid of heat, isn't it? Yes. The Dragon King nodded heavily and said, In the cold winter month, it is snowing heavily outside, and I still feel hot in my room wearing a short-sleeved fan. Later, your body gradually began to become half cold, half hot, just the way you are now. I guess it has been less than half a month since such a situation occurred. Right? Yes. Since the first appearance of abdominal pain, this symptom has not disappeared, especially in the past year, it has become very regular. Attack on time at 12 o'clock every evening, stop at 6 o'clock in the morning, the pain is like 10,000 ants eating the heart, no matter what method cannot stop the pain, is that right? Yes, you are right. At this point, Yi Chu has basically determined what is the trick in the Dragon King. Leaflet, do you have any more questions? There is no problem, but there is one small request. I hope you will cooperate. Yi Chu said. What requirements? Please take off your clothes. Ah. The Dragon King looked at Yi Chu in astonishment with strange eyes. Seeing the look in his eyes, Yi Chu knew that the old guy must have got the wrong idea and hurriedly said, Don't get me wrong, let you take off your clothes. I want to confirm the demagogic poison on your body. I see. The Dragon King took off his coat with a smile. Yi Chu went around behind the Dragon King, looked down, took a breath and murmured, just as I expected. I saw that the skin on the back of the Dragon King was clearly colored, half dark red, like charcoal roasted, the other half white, as if frozen in a freezer, and at the intersection of the vest, there was an inch-long meridian protruding in the shape of purple, like two little snakes together, full of cold breath. Yi Chu, what exactly do you see? Zhao Yun couldn't help asking. Yi Chu looked dignified and said, I am now 100% sure that the demagogic poison in the Dragon King is Yin and Yang Snake Ji Yu. You can see that? The Dragon King was shocked. You know, over the years, the Dragon King has seen many doctors, many of whom are famous holy hands in the world, but no one can see that he is poisoned. And Yi Chu, not only at a glance, but also accurately said what is demagogic poison. Is this kid a medical genius? How does the Dragon King know that the reason why Yi Chu can see his etiology and accurately tell the symptoms is entirely because of the inheritance in his mind? The inheritance of the ancestors of the Yi family is broad and profound and boundless. When Yi Chu thought just now, he was actually looking for medical records with symptoms similar to those of the Dragon King. Finally, he found Yin and Yang snake Ji Yu. For the sake of caution, Yi Chu specially asked the Dragon King a few questions, examined the meridians behind the Dragon King and finally determined that the Dragon King had indeed been tricked by Yin and Yang Snake. Yin Yang Snake Ji Yu is a very poisonous demagogic poison, and the person who plays tricks does not die immediately. Even, at the beginning, there is nothing abnormal in the body. Under normal circumstances, it will lie dormant in the body for half a year before symptoms begin to appear. Then, slowly torture the person who played tricks. 
I can't imagine how the Dragon King got through all these years. Yi Chu sympathized with the Dragon King and said, You've had a hard time all these years, haven't you? That's right. For nine years, every time the poison broke out, the abdominal pain was unbearable and there was no cure, which made life worse than death. The Dragon King smiled freely and easily, but no matter how painful it was, he also carried it through. Yi Chopei said that your willpower is admirable. If it were anyone else, I am afraid it would not last three years. I have practiced martial arts since I was a child, and my physique is better than that of ordinary people. Lobular. Since you can see the demagogic poison on me, does that mean you can cure me? The Dragon King looked at Yi Chu eagerly, and his eyes were full of hope. Yi Chu said with a bitter smile, you think too highly of me. Yin and Yang snake tricks are not ordinary demagogic poisons. If you want to be cured, it is as difficult as going up to the sky. Is there really nothing you can do? The Dragon King asked without giving up. Yi Chu thought about it and said, in fact, there is no way, unless. Unless what? Yi Chu said to himself. In the Maoshan spell, there is a magical secret called opening the heavenly eye. It is said that two inches above the Yin Hall, there is a hidden eye, called the heavenly eye. Once the heavenly eye is opened, in addition to perspective, you can also see some things that are normally invisible, such as ghost, evil spirit, demon, even, the practice of the heavenly eye to the extreme, but also in advance to predict good and bad luck, to see personal luck and the general trend of the world. In short, the magic is endless. However, not everyone can open the heavenly eye. Open the heavenly eye, divided into congenital and acquired. Some people open their heavenly eyes as soon as they are born, such as the emperor, Shenong, Fuxi and Nuwa, these legendary mythological figures. Another is to open the heavenly eye through hard practice, such as Zhu Liang, Li Chengfeng, Yuan Taingang, Lu Boen and so on. But without exception, everyone who opens the heavenly eye is famous for all ages. They are all Yingjia in the world. Yin and Yang snake Ji Yu is hidden in the blood, as small as hair, the trace is difficult to find. Medical means cannot be detected at all. If Yi Chu opened the heavenly eye, then with the help of the perspective function of the heavenly eye, yin and yang snake can be found from the blood of the dragon king. It's just that he was passed on yesterday, and heavenly eye hasn't had time to practice yet. Even if he starts to practice from now on, it is too late, because the dragon king has only seven days to live. Leaflet, you just said unless, unless what? Did you find a cure for me? The dragon king asked anxiously. It's a matter of life and death, and the boss of the underworld in Jiangzhou can no longer be calm. Yi Chu nodded and said, There is indeed a way to help you get rid of the demagogic poison in your body, but unfortunately, I don't know that way. Since you can't, then hurry up and learn. Zhao Yun said. Yi Chu said with a bitter smile, If I can learn it in a short time, then I am sure I will go to school. Xiao Yi, can others learn the method you are talking about? Dragon King thought, If others can learn, then he will do whatever it takes to summon talents to learn, as long as he can save his own life, no matter what the cost is worth. I'm afraid no one else can learn. Yi Chu said that for thousands of years, only a few people have mastered it. What on earth is the method when you say it is so mysterious? I don't believe it. Can't anyone learn it? Zhao Yun questioned Yi Chu's words. Yeah, what kind of method is it? Tell me. The Dragon King also felt that what Yi Chu said was a bit of an exaggeration. Have you ever heard of Keishinai? Yi Chu asked. All of a sudden, the Dragon King's body shook. I have heard of the opening of the heavenly eye, which is a very profound secret art. It is said that it is possible to master it only by enlightened monks and hermit high-ranking people. The Dragon King asked, does this have anything to do with curing my demagogic poison? Not only does it matter, but it also has a lot to do with it. Yi Chu explained that yin and yang snakes are hidden in the blood, so it is extremely difficult to find that if you open the heavenly eye, you can easily find demagogic worms. Dragon King do you know who has mastered this secret? Dragon King Road. This kind of secret art cannot be mastered by ordinary people, looking at the world, if anyone can master it, I am afraid there are only those three people. Which three people? The teacher in charge of Wudang Mountain and Longhu Mountain, as well as the living Buddha of the Heavenly Palace in the Tibetan area. Dragon King, take my advice and find them quickly. Maybe they can save your life. Yi Chu said. In order to reach the top of the list of dragons, the teachers of Wudang Mountain and Dragon and Tiger Mountain were closed to life and death ten years ago. 
As for the living Buddha in the Tibetan heavenly palace, I heard that he had walked into the desert a year ago to find the true meaning of Buddhism. The Dragon King looked up at the sky and sighed in despair. It seemed that God wanted to accept me. Zhao Yun immediately said, Dragon King, I will now take people to the desert to find the living Buddha. Don't waste your time. Dragon King rode, not to mention whether we can find the living Buddha, even if we do, it is not known whether the living Buddha has opened the heavenly eye. Even if I do open the heavenly eye, I am afraid that I, as a small potato, is not qualified to let the living Buddha do it. Despite the fact that the Dragon King Megatron is the king of the underworld in Jiangzhou, in the eyes of those who teach the living Buddha and Mount Wudang, the Dragon King is just a small role that cannot be seen on the stage. But, Zhao Yun still wanted to speak, but was interrupted by the Dragon King raising his hand. As the saying goes, life and death have fate, wealth lies in heaven, since there is nothing you can do, just listen to fate. The Dragon King said. Sadness appeared on Zhao Yun's face. At this time, the Dragon King said kindly to Yi Chu, Xiao Yi, thank you for coming to see me today. You're welcome. I didn't help you anything. The Dragon King laughed and said, didn't I just say that life and death have a life of wealth in heaven, this is my life. But I still want to praise you. Yi Chu looked at the Dragon King doubtfully. Dragon King rode, over the years, I have visited famous doctors, and they have not been able to see that I am demagogic, but you can see at a glance that in my opinion, your medical skills are much better than those who are fishing for fame. Come on, I believe you will become a generation of famous doctors in the future. No, it's a magic doctor. I'll try my best. Yi Chu, is there anything I can do for you? The Dragon King continued, although I am dying, I still have a say in Jiangzhou. Yi Chu almost opened her mouth. He wanted to ask the Dragon King to help with the work, preferably Guo Xiaokong, but on second thought, he felt a little inappropriate. After all, the Dragon King is dying. It is really unkind to make demands on a dying man. When I think of this, Yi Chu said, thank you for your kindness. I appreciate it. I just hope you can get better and ask for nothing else. I knew you'd say that. Dragon King's face became solemn, cheered, Zhao Yun obeyed. Zhao Yun is here. Zhao Yun bowed and clasped his fist. Dragon King rode, after my death, you must take more care of Yi Chu. If Yi Chu wants anything, he will agree to it as long as he does not violate the morality of rivers and lakes. Remember? Remember. Fine. The Dragon King said to Yi Chu, I never like to owe a favor. Yesterday, my grandson fell into the water, and you saved him, and today you help me see a doctor. I'm afraid I don't have a chance to return this favor. I can only ask Zhao Yun. Yi Chu, if you are in trouble in the future, you can call Zhao Yun. Dragon King, that's very kind of you. I didn't do anything. I feel sorry for you. There is no need to take these little things to heart. I hope that after you become a divine doctor in the future, you will hang a pot to save the world and save all sentient beings. The Dragon King patted Yi Chu on the shoulder and told Zhao Yun to see the guest off. Dr. Yi, please. Take care of yourself. After taking a few steps, suddenly, Yi Chu turned back. Seeing Yi Chu turning back, the Dragon King felt a little strange and asked doubtfully. I just suddenly thought of a way that might have some effect on your illness, Yi Chu said. Oh. There was a light in the Dragon King's eyes and hurriedly asked, what is the way? Use acupuncture. Hearing the words, the light in the Dragon King's eyes went out instantly. Thank you, Lobular. In my present situation, acupuncture doesn't work. Over the years, the Dragon King has seen countless famous doctors, and he has also tried to treat demagogic poison with acupuncture, but to no avail. Yi Chu said, Dragon King, although this kind of acupuncture cannot help you get rid of demagogic poison, nor can it cure your body, but it can help you continue your life. I'm dying, so don't waste your time. What did you just say? Renew your life? The Dragon King suddenly reacted and looked at Yi Chu in amazement. Yes, it can help you renew your life. Yi Chu said. Are you kidding me? The Dragon King doesn't believe it. After all, the art of life renewal only exists on legends and TV dramas. In real life, I haven't heard of anyone who knows this secret trick. I'm not kidding you. I'm telling the truth. Yi Chu said very seriously. The Dragon King looked at Yi Chu for a while and saw that he really didn't seem to be lying, so he asked, how long will that help me extend my life? If all goes well, it will give you an extra month to live. It's only one month. Loss appeared again on the face and again on the face of the Dragon King. Is there any difference between seven days and a month? 
There's no difference. Just waiting to die. Zhao Yun followed the Dragon King for so many years, at a glance to see the Dragon King's mind, hasten to advise the Dragon King, since Yi Chu has this ability, let him help you continue your life. Although a month is not long, it can also buy you some time. Maybe in this month, we can find someone to cure your demagogic poison. That's easy to say. For nine years, I have been looking for so many famous doctors that no one can see that I am bewitched. Do you think you can find someone to cure my demagogic poison in just one month? The Dragon King has no hope. Over the years, he has learned that the greater the hope, the greater the disappointment. In the past, whenever he found a famous doctor, the Dragon King would be excited and had great confidence in the famous doctor, but the result was disappointment again and again. Zhao Yun continued to persuade, Dragon King, we have seen so many doctors over the past nine years, no one has been able to see that you are poisoned, but Yi Chu just came today, he can see at a glance, now he can still help you continue your life, what does this mean? It means you don't deserve to die. Please let Yi Chu renew his life for you. I believe that lucky people will have their own appearance. Within a month, there will be a change for the better. Yi Chu, don't you think? Zhao Yun winked at Yi Chu. Yi Chu understood, also advised, Dragon King, you do not hesitate, let me continue to live for you. According to the Dragon King, there is not much difference between seven days and one month, and it is a relief for me to die earlier. You don't know. The taste of unbearable abdominal pain in the middle of the night really makes life worse than death. Yi Chu Dao, Dragon King, I forgot to tell you just now that once the renewal of life is successful, the symptoms of abdominal pain will disappear immediately. Are you serious? Dragon King some doubt Yi Chu's words, said, Demagogic poison has not been removed, how can abdominal pain disappear? This is the magic of this acupuncture, although it cannot remove demagogic poison, but it can prolong life and dispel pain. If, as you said, there will be no more abdominal pain, you can give it a try. Zhao Yun said hurriedly, Yi Chu and the Dragon King have agreed, so please give needles to the Dragon King as soon as possible. Do you have a silver needle? Yi Chu asked. I have it at home. I'll pick it up. Zhao Yun quickly ran into the house, and when he came back, he had an extra medicine box in his hand. Open the medicine box, there are silver needles, alcohol, sterilized cotton balls. Goods are available in all varieties. Yi Chu first clamped a disinfection cotton ball with tweezers, then poured alcohol on the disinfection cotton ball, then picked up a silver needle and wiped it with an alcohol cotton ball to disinfect it. In this way, all the silver needles were sterilized in nearly three minutes. Dragon King, turn your back to me and untie your coat. Yi Chu said. The Dragon King did it at once. Yi Chu also warned that it will be more painful when you stick the needle later. If you can't stand it, call it out. Don't worry, for so many years, I have endured abdominal pain every day, and the pain of needling is nothing. So shall I start? Let's go. Fu Yi Chu quickly injected a needle into the Dazui acupoint of the Dragon King. Two seconds later, Yi Chu asked the Dragon King, Do you have any feelings? A little numb, a little painful, and more and more painful, ah. It hurts. The Dragon King shouted. Zhao Yun was so frightened that he asked, Yi Chu, will the Dragon King be alright? Don't worry, this is a normal reaction. Yi Chu picked up another silver needle and quickly pierced into the Shinto acupoint of the Dragon King. Ah! The Dragon King's cry grew louder. Then Yi Chu pierced a silver needle into the Longwang's Lingtai acupoint. The Dragon King suddenly stopped screaming. Don't you feel better now? Yi Chu asked. Yeah. The Dragon King nodded and went down with two stitches in front of him, which almost killed him and broke out a cold sweat on his forehead. From now on, it won't hurt any more. Even, it will help you adjust the balance of yin and yang. Yi Chu continued to stick the needle. The fourth needle is inserted into the yang acupoint. The fifth needle is inserted into the central point. The sixth needle is inserted into the acupoint in the middle of the spine. The seventh needle was inserted into Juyin Shu. The eighth needle pierced into San Zhao Yu. Ninth stitch. Mingmen acupoint. A magical scene appeared. See the Dragon King vest intersection. The protruding purple meridians unexpectedly disappeared without a trace, as if it had never appeared. Fu Yi Chu exhaled a long breath. Succeed. How do you feel now? Yi Chu asked the Dragon King. I feel much better. The body is warm, just like before I was poisoned, very comfortable. Lobule. What kind of acupuncture is this? Why is it so magical? 
These are nine stitches of Wei Yang, which can adjust the balance of yin and yang and replenish vital energy. It's amazing that you have mastered such a great art of acupuncture. Yi Chu smiled and thought, which is his own fierce, is Yi's old ancestor fierce Ah. The ancestors of the Yi family handed down so many things to themselves, any one of which is a great skill. I really don't know how powerful this Yi ancestor was when he was alive. Yi Chu, did you succeed in continuing your life? Zhao Yun asked nervously. Succeed. Yi Chu Dao, within a month, the life of the Dragon King will be fine. That's good. Zhao Yun heaved a sigh of relief. Just then, the cell phone in Yi Chu's pocket suddenly rang. Little brother, didn't you say to find me something to eat? Why haven't you come back yet? Lin's delicate and coquettish voice came to his ears. Yi Chu remembered that Lin Jing was still waiting for himself in the ward. Oh, no. This woman is moody, and once she gets angry, she won't be able to eat her own fruit. Sister Lin, I'm sorry. My mother came to the hospital just now. I took her home. I rushed back to the hospital right away. Yi Chu told a lie. Well, then come back quickly. I'm so bored. Lin exquisitely said. Yeah, I'll be right back. Yi Chu put up the phone and said to the Dragon King, Dragon King, there is still a patient waiting for me in the hospital. I have to go back immediately. Zhao Yun, take Xiao Yi back to the hospital. Yes. Zhao Yun immediately drove Yi Chu back to the hospital. On the way. Zhao Yun asked, Yi Chu, tell me the truth, can the Dragon King really live for a month? You don't believe me? Zhao Yun said, it's not that I don't believe you, it's really unimaginable to renew your life, and you only have a few needles, and you don't see anything magical. If you are not the Dragon King, you will not feel the magic of returning to the sun. In short, within a month, the Dragon King will eat and sleep soundly. Yi Chu went on to say that if you want to find a way, you'd better find someone to remove the poison from the Dragon King's body, otherwise no one can save the Dragon King's life after a month. I understand. I will arrange for someone to go to the desert to find the living Buddha later. There was a moment of silence in the car. Yi Chu suddenly remembered another thing and said, Brother Zhao, I remember when you came, you told me in the car that the Dragon King was the king of the underworld in Jianzhou and used to be a master of the tiger list, wasn't he? Right. Earlier, the Dragon King also said that the teacher in charge of Wudang Mountain and the head teacher of Dragon and Tiger Mountain are closing the gap between life and death. In order to hit the top of the Dragon List, am I right? You heard me. I would like to ask, what are Tiger List and Dragon List? That sounds awesome. Not only does it sound awesome, but it is also true. Zhao Yun asked, do you know the Forbes Rich List? Yes, the people on the list are super rich worth tens of billions of dollars. In fact, like the Forbes Rich List, the Dragon List and the Tiger List are also ranked on the same list, except that the people on the Forbes Rich List are super rich, while those on the Dragon List and Tiger List are martial arts experts. Martial arts master? Yi Chu is a little curious, people who practice martial arts still have rankings? Zhao Yundao, let's talk about the Tiger List first. The Tiger List is ranked every five years, and on the Dragon Boat Festival on the fifth day of May, Martial arts practitioners will gather at the Confucius Temple in Jinling to participate in the competition, and finally, the top 30 will be on the list. Before the Dragon King was poisoned, he ranked 12th on the Tiger List and was the only Tiger List master in Jiangzhou. Since being poisoned by Demagogue, the body of the Dragon King has deteriorated day by day. Five years ago, when the Tiger List competed for hegemony, the Dragon King withdrew voluntarily and did not participate in the competition. Therefore, it can only be said that he used to be a Tiger List master. What about the Dragon List? Yi Chu asked again. Dragon List. Worship appeared on Zhao Yun's face and said that if he boarded the list of dragons, he could be called the Great Master of Martial Arts, and his name could be engraved on the stone wall of Mount Tai for later generations to admire. This is the dream of every martial arts practitioner. Of course, most of the people who can challenge the Dragon List master come from the Tiger List. Do not rule out. Occasionally there will be a few unknown, but very strong roles. However, the chances of success in the challenge are slim. In fact, every time the Dragon List updates the list, the biggest focus is the competition between the Dragon List masters. The master of the Dragon List at the back of the list will challenge the master at the front. Zhao Yun said, in short, each of the masters on the Dragon List is very strong, like an unclimbable peak, so strong that people are desperate. Who are the people on the Dragon List? Yi Chu could not imagine the extent to which he could get on the dragon list by practicing martial arts. 
Zhao Yun replied that in the last dragon list, Wudang Mountain and Longhushan ranked second and third respectively. The fourth is the host of Tianlong Temple in Dali. The fifth is a woman from the Morong family in Gusu. What about number one? Yi Chu was very curious and asked, who is number one on the dragon list? At the top of the list is. Why do you ask? Zhao Yun is a little confused. Yi Chu said with a smile, I'm just curious. Zhao Yun said just then that the top name of the dragon list is Xiao Zhu, the god of war in the north. He commanded a million troops and was in power. He used to kill the enemy with his own strength, and he was brave and unmatched. Therefore, he is now named the champion. Ten years ago, Dongyue Mount Tai, Mount Wudang and Dragon and Tiger Mountain simultaneously launched a challenge to Xiao Zhu, trying to reach the top of the list of dragons. As a result, the two men joined hands and failed to stop Xiao Zhu San. The most terrible thing is that Xiao Zhu is only 35 years old. What? Only 35 years old? In other words, Xiao Zhu was only 25 years old when he asked about the list of Dinglong. Damn it, this is so sick. Yi Chojun was extremely shocked. It is precisely because of this, Wudang Mountain Teacher and Dragon and Tiger Mountain Teacher deeply humiliated, after coming back, directly closed life and death, ready to wait for the next dragon list to fight for hegemony. But in my opinion, the chances of success in the challenge are slim. Zhao Yun said that because there have long been rumors in the rivers and lakes that Xiao Zhu's strength is close to the divine level, he may be able to rank among the masters of the divine list. The list of gods? Yi Chu frowned, what is this? I know very little about the list of gods. I only hear that the list of gods is ranked once every thirty years, and the world's divine masters compete for the rankings. I don't know where to compete. Zhao Yun said with a smile, I didn't even squeeze into the tiger list. The divine list is too far away for me. I wish I could be a master on the list of gods one day. Yi Chu suddenly sighed with emotion. You? Zhao Yun looked at him and said with a smile, you'd better study medicine. Are you so unsure of me? You are an ordinary person now, not to mention the list of gods, even if you are on the list of dragons, it is impossible for you to be on the list after thirty years. If one day I become a dragon list master, brother Zhao, how about you be my little brother? Yi Chu joked. Good. Zhao Yun did not hesitate at all. In his opinion, Yi Chu has no foundation in kung fu, not to mention the dragon list, even if it is the tiger list, it is impossible in this life. Counting the time, the list of the dragon list and the tiger list will be updated again next year. I don't know if I can squeeze into the tiger list this time. When Zhao Yun sighed, the hospital arrived. Zhao Yun gave his phone number to Yi Chu and said, if anyone bothers you, call me. Yes. After getting off the bus, Yi Chu went straight to the intensive care unit. Get in the door. I was scared. Lin Jingli unexpectedly took off his coat. Smooth jade skin, almost all exposed to the outside. If you are not courteous, you should not see. Yi Chu instinctively wants to retire. But soon, he realized that something was wrong. Lin exquisitely bowed his head, one hand in front of his chest, and the other hand constantly moving behind his back. I didn't know anyone had come in. Sister Lin, what are you doing? Yi Chu couldn't help asking. Suddenly heard someone talking, Lin exquisite scared, hurriedly pulled over the quilt to cover the body, but when she looked up to see as Yi Chu, the beautiful face appeared happy again, hurriedly said, you come back just in time, come and help me. What happened to you? Yi Chu asked. Lin Exquisite said, the hair is wrapped in the underwear button, has not been done for a long time, you quickly help me. Sister Lin, this is. Not so good, is it? Although Yi Chu is not a gentleman, he also knows the truth that men and women are not close to each other. If you are caught by someone, you will not be able to clean yourself by jumping into the Yellow River. Besides, the hospital is not a good place. Little nurses like to gossip most. If there are anecdotes about nurses hooking up with female patients, he will not be able to work in the hospital. Lin Jingjing did not know that Yi Chu had so many worries. Seeing him standing still, he said, what are you still doing foolishly? Come and help me quickly. Sister Lin, why don't I call a nurse? What do you want the nurse to do? Lin Exquisite looked at Yi Chu, instantly understand. Zhao smiled, I am not afraid of a woman, what are you afraid of? But. Stop talking and hurry up. Lin Exquisite feigned anger, if you dare not listen to me, then I will complain against you. Yi Chu is helpless. Who called herself her nurse? 
Lin exquisite sighed, all of a sudden, a flawless back into the line of sight of Yi Chu, like the best lanolin white jade, emitting a glittering white light. Not a trace of fat. Like her name, very exquisite. I looked down and took a closer look. Sure enough, my hair was wrapped around the button. Come on, help me. Lin exquisitely urged. Yi Chu came to the hospital bed, stretched out his hand carefully, got it for a while, and was so anxious that his forehead was sweating. All right, Sister Lin. Yi Chu heaved a sigh of relief. Untie me. Lin exquisite said again. What? Yi Chui didn't react at once. Help me unbutton. Lin exquisite said, the size is too small. Strangled me very uncomfortable. I have to change to a larger size. Yi Chu is speechless. Come on. Lin exquisite urged again. You'd better do it yourself. Yi Chu took two steps back, thinking that this woman had her own hands, but let herself help her. She must want to take advantage of herself. She must not be allowed to succeed. Coward. Lin exquisite white Yi Chu glanced and said, in the wardrobe to help me with a piece of clothes. The intensive care unit is not a general ward, and each room is equipped with a separate bathroom and solid wood wardrobe. Yi Chu went over and opened the wardrobe. I stayed at once. Inside the wardrobe, there are all kinds of clothes, short skirts, professional clothes, evening dresses. My eyes are full of Lin Lang. At least a dozen. There are even two extremely sexy halter skirts. Yi Chu swallowed quietly. Is this woman here in hospital or on vacation? Sister Lin, which one are you going to wear? Yi Chu asked. The white t-shirt on the far left, do you see it? Give it to me. Yi Chu took off his clothes and handed them to Lin Jing. Lin was not in a hurry to get dressed, but looked at Yi Chu with his watery eyes. His long eyelashes trembled and said charming, little brother, do you want to see it? Yi Chu can't stand it. Lin Jing is now naked, holding her hands in front of her chest, slightly blocking it, like a pippa half covered, making people can't help but want to peep into the scenery under her hands. Look, or not. This is a difficult problem. Yi Chu is a normal man, faced with such a situation, he is in a dilemma. If you look, he is a monster. If you don't look, it's not as good as a beast. After all, Lin is such a beautiful woman that I don't know how many people want to have a look in their dreams. Yi Chu finally couldn't help it and nodded. Want to see it? Lin Jing asked. Yi Chu nodded again. You wish, cluck. Lin exquisitely giggled. Shit, I was fooled. Lin exquisitely raised the corners of his mouth slightly and smiled proudly. By the time Yi Chu turned around, she was already dressed, but the t-shirt was a little small, setting off some part of Lin's exquisite beauty. I'm afraid it's 36 days. Yi Chu said to himself. You didn't deal with today's affairs decisively enough. Lin Jing said suddenly. Yi Chu wondered, what are you referring to? About you and Guo Xiaokong. Sister Lin, how do you know? Yi Chu was very surprised. Lin exquisite smile said, you scrapped him, such a big news. The hospital has long been flying, I heard the little nurse said. I see. Sister Lin, you just said that I was not decisive enough. What would you do if it were you? Yi Chu was a little curious and asked. Lin Jingzi smiled and said, if it were me, I would kill Guo Xiaokong. As the saying goes, rip is easy to mess with, but imps are difficult to deal with. Guo Xiaokong is a complete villain. If you don't kill him, he will come after you again. Moreover, the next time he troubles you, it will definitely be no ordinary trouble, and maybe it will threaten your life. I don't think so. You don't believe me? I think Guo Xiaokong, although a little arrogant, but threatened my life, he should not dare. Don't ignore the villain's determination to take revenge. We'll see if you don't believe it. Meanwhile, in another intensive care unit of Jiangzhou Hospital, Guo Xiaokong woke up faintly. Xiao Kong, you're awake. Zhang Lili looked surprised. Where is this? Guo Xiaokong asked. The intensive care unit. Zhang Lili said that several experts in the hospital jointly operated on you and have successfully connected your broken arm and knee, saying that you only need to rest for half a year to recover as before. Where's my dad? Vice Dean Guo is at work. Guo Xiaokong was furious when he heard the speech. I was like this, but he still wanted to go to work? Xiao Kong. Don't be angry, the doctor said. Anger during recuperation is not conducive to recovery. Get out. Guo Xiaokong roared angrily. For a moment, tears swirled in her eyes, and Zhang Lili was extremely aggrieved. Are you deaf? 
I said get out. Guo Xiaokong shouted again. Wow, Zhang Lily ran out crying. Bitch, if it wasn't for you, I'd be like this. I calmed down for a while. Guo Xiaokong looked at the ceiling with venomous eyes and gritted his teeth. Yi Chu, you wait for me. I won't let you go. I'm going to kill your whole family. Yi Chu is off duty. Standing at the door of the hospital, he took a long breath. This day to take care of Lin Exquisite can be said to be tortured. This charming woman always liked to flirt with him. Many times, it made Yi Chu blush and her heart beat. But he didn't dare to do anything impolite. After all, he was just a nurse, and in case he upset Lin, he would lose his job. This grind leprechaun, ah, do not know how long to wait? Yi Chu sighed and walked out of the hospital gate. Just then, a Mercedes Benz rushed over, as if desperate, menacing. Yi Chu quickly dodged aside. Put the window down. Yi Chu saw Zhao Yun sitting in the cab. Zhao Yun looked serious. Brother Zhao, what are you doing here? Yi Chu asked doubtfully. Get in. Yi Chu was a little nervous, and Zhao Yun came to him again. Is there something wrong with the Dragon King's body? Zhao Yunmo was silent and drove seriously. Seeing him like this, Yi Chu felt even more uneasy. Only after the car had been driven for some distance did Zhao Yun say, Yi Chu, do you know why I came to you? Is it the Dragon King? Yes. Thump. Yi Chu's heart mentioned his throat and said hurriedly, No, I have already injected the Dragon King. In theory, his demagogic poison has been controlled, and it should not worsen within a month. Who says the Dragon King's condition has worsened? So you just said the Dragon King. What I'm actually trying to say is that the Dragon King sent me. Zhao Yun said. Yi Chu realized that he had misunderstood and could not help asking, What did the Dragon King send you to do? Thank you, of course. Just in front of the red light, Zhao Xin stepped on the brake, reached out and took a wooden box from the back row, threw it to Yi Chu, and said, This is from the Dragon King to you. What's that? See for yourself. Yi Chu opened the wooden box and found that inside the box lay a ginseng with long roots, like a sleeping old man, lifelike. This ginseng is quite old, isn't it? Yi Chu asked. This is a century old ginseng. Zhao Yun said. What? A hundred years old? Yi Chu was shocked. Ordinary ginseng is very expensive on the market, with a little bit of age, ranging from tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands. There are at least one million ginseng like this, and the most important thing is that it is very rare. Even if you have money, you may not be able to buy it. Yi Chu hurriedly closed the wooden box and said, Brother Zhao, I can't take such a valuable thing, you take it back to the Dragon King. Dragon King said, This is for you, if you recognize him as a friend, do not refuse. But, take it. Zhao Yun said with a smile, Don't you want to be a Dragon Master and accept me as your younger brother? I'm telling you. If you eat it, you can be a master. Really? The hundred-year-old mountain ginseng can be a great tonic and is of great benefit to those who practice martial arts. Yi Chu was a little moved. After thinking about it, he said, Okay. I'll take this old mountain ginseng. If you go back, please tell the Dragon King that I thank him. Good. After I came back, did the Dragon King feel all right? Yi Chu asked with concern. Okay, good. After you left, the Dragon King went to bed. He didn't get up until six o'clock in the afternoon and ate two big bowls of rice. He was in better spirits than ever before. But this situation can only last for a month, you still have to find a way to find a master who can cure the Dragon King as soon as possible. Yi Chu reminded me. Zhao Yun said, I have already sent someone to the desert. As to whether we can find a living Buddha, it depends on fate. I don't think you should pin your hopes on one person. What do you mean? Yi Chu Dao, the living Buddha is looking for the true meaning of Buddhism in the desert, and it is unknown whether he can be found or not, so I think you should go to Wudang Mountain or Dragon and Tiger Mountain. Come on, there's no chance in these two places. Zhao Yun said that the masters of Wudang Mountain and Longhushan are close to life and death, and no one is seen, let alone the Dragon King, even if the champion Marquis goes. By the way, why don't you try the champion? Yi Chu Dao. Xiao Ju is the first on the list of dragons, and his strength is better than that of Wudang Mountain and Longhushan. He should have a way, right? Brother, you still don't know Xiao Ju. Zhao Yun sighed that Xiao Jugui was the champion, commanding millions of troops and turning power to the government and the opposition. People like us are like ants in his eyes. If the Dragon King goes to beg him, 
he is afraid that he will not even see each other. At that time, the demagogic poison will not be eliminated, but it will add shame. Zhao Yun said, Therefore, there is only one hope now, and that is the living Buddha. I hope Long Wang Ji people will have their own appearance. Where's your house? Zhao Yun said, I'll take you back. 188 Jingu Road. In 15 minutes, Yi Chu arrived home. When she entered the door, Qian Jinglin asked nervously, Chu Er, are you all right? I'm fine. Yi Chu said with a smile, Mom, I'm sorry I made you worry. Did you be punished in the hospital? No. What about Guo Xiaokong? Did their father and son embarrass you? No, neither. How was this possible? I first looked at the appearance of Vice Dean Guo. I wish I could kill you. Chu Er, tell me the truth. Qian Jinglin kept a straight face and felt that Yi Chu was not telling the truth. Mom, I'm really okay. Yi Chu was also surprised that after he returned to the hospital from the Dragon King's home, Guo was furious and the medical staff did not look for him, as if this had never happened. If it had been put in the past, the medical staff would have come to trouble me a long time ago, and it is a bit unscientific that they did not come to me after such a big thing happened today. And Guo Danger, who tried to kill me during the day, but now he hasn't even seen anyone. Why? After thinking about it, Yi Chu felt that there was only one possibility, that is, Guo Da Ren knew the identity of Zhao Yun and was afraid of the Dragon King, so he dared not touch him for the time being. There is something strange about this matter. You beat Guo Xiaokong like that. There was no punishment in the courtyard, and Guo Xiaokong and his son did not trouble you. It was very abnormal. Qian Jinglin reminded Yi Chu, Chu Er, you must be careful. Don't worry, Mom. I'll be fine. After dinner, Yi Chu lay down early. After years of studying medicine, he formed the habit of getting up early and going to bed early. But today, it's a little difficult to sleep. What the Dragon King and Zhao Yun said seemed to open the door to a new world, especially the champion Hu Xiaoju, who was worshipped by Yi Chu. Suddenly, an idea came into his mind. If I start practicing martial arts now, will I become a figure like Xiaoju in the future, with all the attention and power all over the world? Such as Zhang Wuji, Yang Guo, Li Zunwan. Only with the passage of time, people slowly grow up, they gradually understand that the heroic dream is getting farther and farther away from themselves. Especially when you are overwhelmed by the pressure of life, you will feel that the heroic dream is too ethereal. Even, it's a little funny. However, there is no denying it. No matter when, no matter where, no matter how old or young, no matter what kind of environment we are in, we know that this heroic dream is illusory but we are still full of expectations. What if? What if one day you get an adventure and become a master? In that way, we can soar into the sky, change the status quo, and reach the pinnacle of life. Yi Chu is no exception. He was dependent on his mother since childhood, and his family was poor. When he was at school, he was often bullied by his classmates. From then on, Yi Chu had a dream. You have to be strong. So strong that no one dares to bully himself. He also fantasized many times that one day, like the protagonist in the martial arts drama, he could protect his family and serve the country and the people. However, when he grew up, he knew that TV dramas are all deceptive. There are no heroes in this world, and no one will bring down the dragon's 18 palms. But today, the words of Dragon King and Zhao Yun opened his understanding. Although there are no dragons and 18 hands in this world, there are martial arts masters, but they just don't know it all the time. And the tiger list, the dragon list, the god list. It all sounds fascinating. In particular, champion Hu Xiaoju has been chased by Yi Chu. People, once they have thoughts in their minds, they can't help thinking. The more I think about it, the more excited I get. Yi Chu immediately looked for the secret books of martial arts from the inheritance. However, in the inheritance of the ancestors of the Yi family, there were as many as tens of thousands of secret books on martial arts, and Yi Chu was dazzled. Just when he didn't know which secret book to choose, a thin pamphlet caught his attention. Several seal characters are written on the cover of the booklet, giving people a sense of the vicissitudes of life. The magic dragon formula of nine turns. Yi Chu recognized for a long time before he recognized a few seal characters. The name sounds domineering. When Yi Chu opened it, he saw that there were notes of Yi's ancestors on the home page. I accidentally learned that the origin of this method is unknown and who created it. According to my research, this method is very mysterious and can be practiced to the extreme, or it can be pushed back through the ages. 
However, only those who have no practice can practice. When I got it, I became a great success, so it is a great pity that I could not practice this method. After reading it, Yi Chu was happy. Lao Tzu said, only those who do not practice can practice this method. Don't I just fit in? Yi Chu turned to the second page again. This page is a detailed introduction of the nine-turn magic dragon formula. After reading it, Yi Chu felt that this kung fu was very suitable for him. In general, martial arts training needs to start with standing stakes and squatting horses, and only after decades of practice can we achieve a little success. But this skill is different, whether the practice is successful or not depends on talent. People with high talent get twice the result with half the effort and break through the realm easily, while those with low talent find it difficult to understand the first turn throughout their lives. I don't know what my talent is. Yi Chu is eager to try. According to the introduction, there are a total of nine realms in the nine-turn divine dragon formula, and the first one is the physical state. The first step in the cultivation of physical training is to guide the innate spirit and open up the governor's second pulse. The second step is to perceive the Reiki of heaven and earth and harden the body with Reiki. With the accumulation of Reiki, the practitioner's physical strength will gradually increase. When the strength of the arms reaches 3000 Jin, it will be considered a great achievement, and the next realm of practice can be achieved. Strangely enough, after reading the introduction and practice methods of the first turn, Yi Chu tried to open the back and found that he could not open it. A thin piece of paper is as heavy as Mount Tai. What's going on? Yi Chu thought about it for a while and got it. If you can't comprehend the state of the first turn, then you can't see the realm behind it. This skill is a bit of a pit. Anyway, try it first. According to the practice method, Yi Chu sat down on his knees on the bed, then put his hands on his knees, palms up, closed his eyes, and carefully felt the air flow in his body. According to the introduction of the function method, there is a breath of qi hidden in the Beiwi acupoint on everyone's head, which is called congenital qi. Only by perceiving the innate qi and then guiding the congenital qi to open the second pulse of the governor can we take the first step. Fifteen minutes go by. Yi Chu got nothing and felt nothing. Is my method wrong? Yi Chu carefully looked at the practice method again and was sure that he had not made a mistake. He could not help but wonder why he did not feel the existence of innate spirit. Try again. Yi Chu continues to practice. In half an hour. Yi Chu opened his eyes and still got nothing, which made him doubt himself. Is it because of my talent that I am not suitable for practicing the nine-turn magic dragon formula? Where does Yi Chu know that many people do not feel the existence of innate qi throughout their lives? Besides, he only practiced for less than an hour. Since this method exists, then there must be a reason for it. What mistakes must have occurred in the course of my practice? Suddenly, Yi Chu remembered what Zhao Yun said that as long as he ate a hundred years of old mountain ginseng, he could become a master. When he thought of this, he took out the hundred-year-old mountain ginseng, didn't even wash it, and ate it directly. In less than three minutes, a stream of heat rose from Dantian, and Yi Chu was hot all over. Yi Chu immediately closed her eyes, felt the heat flow carefully, and then practiced according to the method of practice. Another half an hour passed. Suddenly, Yi Chu's brain shook and he obviously felt that a cool air spread down from the Beiwi acupoint above his head. Innate spirit. Yi Chu held back her excitement and, according to the method of practice, led the air to the governor's second pulse. Unexpectedly, the second pulse of the governor is like an iron wall, and the innate spirit cannot be washed away at all. Yi Chu did not give up and continued to impact. Wait until dawn, click, and finally, the innate spirit of the governor opened the second pulse. For a moment, Yi Chu felt that his whole body was full of strength, which was so cool. Moreover, after a night of practice, he did not feel the slightest fatigue, but felt relaxed all over. Get out of bed to the window, looking at the rising sun, Yi Chu's face has a strong self-confidence. If one day, I can become a figure like Xiao Zhu, I must let my mother's family beg my mother to go back on her knees. I also want to find my real father and let him kneel in front of his mother to repent and apologize. I will make those who despise us look up to me forever. The nurse, to put it bluntly, is a babysitter who has to do everything. When he bought breakfast and came out of the canteen, he met Zhang Lily at the door. Yi Chu chose to ignore and pass by. Halt! Zhang Lily shouted. Yi Chu took it as if he didn't hear it and went straight away. Yi Chu! Stop! Zhang Lily shouted again. It was only then that Yi Chu stopped, looked at Zhang Lily and asked, Are you talking to me? Zhang Lily is very angry. 
If I don't talk to you, am I talking to the dog? If you have fart, let it go. Yi Chu said impolitely. Zhang Lily turned pale with anger and said quietly, Yi Chu, I advise you to apologize to Xiao Kong right away, otherwise you won't know how to die. Are you worried about me? Yi Chu Sheng softened a little, thinking that Zhang Lily was worried that he would be retaliated by Guo Xiao Kong. But Zhang Lily's next words made him realize that he was wrong. Worried about you? Well, you are an illegitimate child, what do I have to worry about? I'm trying to make Xiao Kong feel better soon. He hates you so much now. If you go to apologize to Xiao Kong on your knees, maybe Xiao Kong's anger will go away and he will recover faster. This is it? What else do you think I'm gonna tell you? I'm telling you, if it wasn't for Xiao Kong, I wouldn't even look at you. Zhang Lily, I also want to tell you, don't treat yourself too much as a person, and don't treat others too badly. You used to be my girlfriend, I can tolerate your capriciousness, spoil you like a baby, in the future, you are in my eyes. Bullshit! Yi Chu said, swaggering away. Zhang Lily was so angry that she stamped her foot in place and cursed Yi Chu's back, I was really blind before I took a fancy to you as a loser. Yi Chu said, Sister Lin, I don't know what you like to eat, so I bought you some crystal bags. Crystal bag, my favorite. Lin exquisitely surprised, grateful said, Yi Chu, thank you. You're welcome. That's what I'm supposed to do. Yi Chu, I have one more small request. Can you promise me? Sister Lin, tell me. Will you feed me? Lin exquisitely beeped and looked at Yi Chu pitifully, looking very cute. Yi Chu had a headache and said, Sister Lin, can I refuse? No. Lin exquisitely narrowed his eyes and had a charming smile on his pretty face. Yi Chu had no choice but to sit by the bed, holding Xiaolongbao with chopsticks and delivering it to Lin's exquisite mouth. Lin eats very slowly, taking small bites and winking at Yi Chu from time to time, looking and behaving very much like the heroine in some kind of movie. What a leprechaun! Yi Chu dared not look at her. After eating half the crystal bag, Lin Jingjing said, Yi Chu, can you do me another favor? Can you help me eat the remaining half of the crystal bag? Yi Chu looked down at the crystal bag with Lin's delicate lipstick on it. If you eat it, isn't it? Indirect kissing? Yi Chu hesitated. Come on. Lin exquisitely urged. Sister Lin, I've had breakfast, and I'm not hungry now. Yi Chu doesn't think this is a good idea. He and Lin Jingjing are only the relationship between patients and caregivers, not boyfriend and girlfriend. In case it is seen, the impact is very bad. Yi Chu, do you feel dirty after I ate half of it, so you don't want to eat it? Lin asked exquisitely. Sister Lin, you misunderstand. I, you just hate me. Lin was exquisite and angry, with tears in his beautiful eyes, as if he would cry the next second. Yi Chu said hurriedly, Sister Lin, I really don't dislike you. Then you eat. Lin Jingli said, as long as you eat this half of the crystal bag, I will believe you. Yi Chu is still hesitant. Let me feed you. Lin Jingjing took the chopsticks on his own initiative, held half of the crystal bag and sent it to Yi Chu's mouth. Yi Chu is in trouble. To eat or not to eat? This is a problem. Open your mouth. Lin's delicate voice is gentle, like a virtuous wife feeding her husband. Yi Chu had to open her mouth. After eating the steamed buns, Lin exquisitely used paper to gently wipe the corners of Yi Chu's mouth and asked, Is it delicious? Yeah. Do you still want to eat? How about I eat half of the rest of the crystal bag and you half of it? Sister Lin. Ahem. Suddenly, there was a heavy cough at the door. Yi Chu turned her head and saw Bai Bing standing at the door of the ward, with a tall figure wrapped in professional attire, her hair pulled behind her head and a pretty face cold. Director Bai. Yi Chu stood up hurriedly and asked, When did you come? Bai glanced at Yi Chu coldly and then asked Lin, How is your injury? I can't die. Although Lin is talking with a smile, his tone is also full of coldness. Yi Chu looked up at Bai Bing, then at Lin's delicacy, and asked, Do you know each other? It's none of your business. The two women spoke in unison. Yi Chu made a fool of himself and simply didn't bother to speak. Bai Bing. Are you here to see me? Lin asked with a delicate smile. Don't say my name. I don't know you that well. I'm here to see Yi Chu. Bai Bingen said, Yi Chu, come out with me. Oh. Yi Chu answered and followed Bai Bing to the door. Wait a minute. Lin exquisitely said, Director Bai, Yi Chu is now my nurse. If you call him away, do you have to say hello to me? 
I'm the chief of surgery. Yi Chu is a probationary doctor in my department. I call him. I don't need to say hello to anyone. Bai Bing's attitude is very tough. But he is no longer a probationary doctor, he is now my nurse. So what? I can dispatch every nurse in this hospital. Bai Bing continued, Lin Exquisite, I would like to remind you that Yi Chu is unreliable and does not work seriously, you'd better change to a nurse. Yi Chu looked at Bai Bing in surprise. What does she mean? Doesn't she know that if I lose this job, I'll get out of the hospital? Yi Chu is a little dissatisfied with Bai Bing. Lin said with a delicate smile, thank Director Bai for reminding me. I like Yi Chu. He is not only handsome, but also serves me meticulously. Bai Bing said, maybe everything you see is made by Yi Chu, but don't be deceived by the illusion. Yi Chu took another look at Bai Bing. What happened to Director Bai today? Why do you speak ill of me again and again? Fortunately, Lin Jingjing did not believe Bai Bing's words, only heard Lin Exquisite said, I believe in my eyes, these days, such a good man like Yi Chu is really too few, if only he were my boyfriend. Yi Chu, do you want to be my boyfriend? Yi Chu was stunned, and although he knew that Lin was joking, he could not help but throb in his heart. If only she was serious. Seeing Yi Chu in a daze, Bai Bing didn't hit a place and shouted angrily, Yi Chu, you come out to me. After entering the door, Bai Bing sat down in the office chair, her pretty face covered with frost. Seeing her like this, Yi Chu was very nervous and asked carefully, Director, what are you looking for me for? I can't talk to you if it's okay? Bai Bing has a bad tone. Yi Chu stuck to his head and said jokingly, Director, you are joking, you are my boss, you can call me whenever you want. Let me ask you, are you interested in Lin Jing? Bai Bing asked in the face. No, Director, don't get me wrong. Director, it's not what it looks like, it's actually. Shut up. Bai Bing interrupted Yi Chu and said, I remind you, Lin Jing is not a good woman, you'd better stay away from her, or you won't know how to die. Yi Chu took a surprised look at Bai Bing and said secretly that Director Bai was so angry. Did she have a problem with Lin's exquisite? What are you looking at? Do you think I have a personal feud with Lin Jing? I can tell you clearly, no. I told you to stay away from her for your own good. Yi Chu was even more surprised. Although Bai Bing used to be good to herself, she said very little, and neither of them could say a few words in a week, but today, Bai Bing seems to have a lot of words. It's not normal. Yi Chu said, Director Bai, I am now a nurse, Sister Lin is my patient, and it is my duty to take care of her. Sister Lin? I can't believe you call Sister Lin Jingzi? Bai Bing said angrily, How long have you known her? You don't know anything about her, so you dare to call her sister? Isn't it just a title? Yi Chu was a little baffled and could not understand why Bai Bing was so angry. Bang! Bai Bing slapped her face on the table and said angrily, Yi Chu, I remind you again, don't go near Lin Exquisite. I'm doing this for your own good. Director Bai, I know you are doing it for my own good, but can you make it clear that you can't make me confused? Bai Bing said that although Lin Jingjing is very beautiful, he has a heart of scorpions. Did you know that her fiancé was poisoned to death by her? What? Yi Chu was surprised and inconceivable. What, you don't believe me? Bai Bing has bad eyes. Yi Chu shook her head hurriedly and said, Of course I will believe what you said, but I find it hard to believe that Sister Lin is such a person. You still call her sister? Bai Bing said, Remember, in front of me in the future, you are not allowed to call her sister. Yes. Yi Chu nodded and asked, Director Bai, what on earth is going on? I think Lin. Lin is exquisite and doesn't look like a bad guy. How can he be a bad guy? Some people look like people, but they don't know what it looks like behind their backs. Lin's exquisite poisoning of her fiance A was in an uproar several years ago, which was well known to people in Jiangsu and Zhejiang provinces, but no concrete evidence was found at that time, otherwise she would have been in prison. It is precisely because of this that Lin Jingjing was driven out by his family and came to Jiangzhou to start a business. Bai Bing said that this woman was very resourceful. As soon as she arrived in Jiangzhou, she blended into the upper class circle of Jiangzhou. With her extraordinary appearance and figure, she attracted many admirers, whether they were unmarried male brothers or married men, all around her. In just a few years, she started in Jiangzhou, the company was also successfully listed, and was regarded as the first beautiful president of Jiangzhou by the financial magazine. Speaking of this, Bai Bing sneered incessantly, others do not know her details, I can be very clear, is not just a social flower, there is nothing to flatter. 
Yi Chu asked curiously, Director Bai, why do you know so much about Lin's exquisite things? Because she and I are. In the middle of Bai Bing's words, she suddenly stopped and said, she's not a good person anyway. Remember, stay away from her. When I was in the ward, I said in front of her that you didn't work hard, but I didn't want you to have anything to do with her. Bai Bing softened her voice and said, I will find a way to transfer you back from the nursing station. In short, it is better to be as far away from Lin's exquisite as possible. I see. Yi Chu had some opinions about Bai Bing before. After hearing her explanation, there was no resentment in his heart. Thank you, Director Bai. Yi Chu said gratefully. You're welcome. Bai Bing continued, in the future, in private, you can also call me sister. Ah. Yi Chu looked at Bai Bing foolishly and thought he had heard wrong. Ah, what? I'm older than you. Bai Bing glanced at Yi Chu and quickly moved her eyes away. Yi Chu keenly caught a ray of shyness from Bai Bing's eyes. Strangely, why is Director Bai shy? By the way, Wo Xiaokang and Guo Dajung, did they bother you? Bai Bing suddenly asked. Yi Chu shook her head, no. Although they are not bothering you for the time being, you should be careful. After all, you must be on guard against others. Bai Bing warned. I'll try. I'll tell the nursing station later and transfer you back to the department. Forget it. I'd better go and tell Lin Jingjing myself, in case something happens to her. Bai Bing worked vigorously and took Yi Chu to the intensive care ward again. Lin Jingli saw Bai Bing and Yi Chu enter the door and said with a smile, Director Bai, thank you for sending Yi Chu back to me. I just came to tell you that from now on, Yi Chu is no longer your nurse. Bai Bing rode. What does it mean? The smile on Lin's delicate face is gone. Bai Bing said, from now on, Yi Chu will be transferred back to surgery and continue to be a probationary doctor. A new nurse will be sent to you from the nursing station. What do you mean, Bai Bing? Yi Chu is my nurse. Why should you transfer him? Lin was exquisite and angry. Because I'm the chief of surgery. If you dare to abuse your power, I will complain against you. Whatever. Yu Lin Jingjing was very angry, but the next second, he giggled again. I almost forgot that, in your capacity, no one in this hospital dared to touch you even if he was complained about. But I'm curious, why did you transfer Yi Chu? Are you jealous when you see Yi Chu with me? Lin is exquisite, don't talk nonsense. Bai Bing snapped. If you don't, why lose your temper? The smile on Lin's delicate face became thicker, and he said in a painstaking tone, Bai Bing, I don't mean you. You have such a big temper. You should have found a man to moisturize, otherwise you should be careful of endocrine disorders. When Lin finished, he winked at Yi Chu and asked, Yi Chu, do you think I'm right? How dare Yi Chu reply, pretending not to hear. Ha! Huh. Bai Bing gave a cold hum and said, Yi Chu, let's go. Halt! Lin Jingzi suddenly turned his face and said, Yi Chu is my nurse. Without my permission, I will not allow anyone to transfer him. I'm his boss, and I have the right to transfer him. Bai Bing said. I signed an employment contract with Yi Chu, which is clearly written in black and white. Bai Bing, do you want Yi Chu to breach the contract? Breach of contract means breach of contract, all compensation. I help Yi Chu compensate. Bai Bing, do you mean to be my enemy? Lin exquisite face is very ugly, the body exudes a huge aura, although sitting on the bed, but still give people a queen-like feeling. So what if it is? Bai Bing is not to be outdone, but also released a unique temperament. Lengen contains nobility, just like a goddess above. Looking at each other, the eyes were cold, and in an instant, the temperature in the ward plummeted below zero. Yi Chu was confused. He didn't expect this to happen and tried to persuade them, but he didn't know where to open his mouth. Just then, doodle. Yi Chu's mobile phone suddenly rang and took it out to see that it was a strange number. Hello, who is this? Yi Chu asked politely. Are you Yi Chu? A hoarse voice came from over there. It's me. Yi Chu asked again, who are you? You don't care who I am, I just want to tell you that Qian Jinglin is in my hand. The hoarse voice said, if you don't want her to die, come to the Rotten Tail building next to Central North Road at once. You're dead. Yi Chu only said that, and then rushed out of the ward. When Bai Bing chased out, he saw Yi Chu going down the stairs very fast. Yi Chu, Yi Chu. Bai Bing followed and shouted loudly. However, Yi Chu ignored it and went directly to the other floor of the inpatient department. 
No, Guo Shaokong lives on this floor. When Bai Bing realized that Yi Chu was looking for Guo Shaokong, her face changed slightly, and she chased after him and shouted, Yi Chu, don't fool around. But it's still too late. Bang! Yi Chu suddenly kicked open the door of the ward. When he went in, he could not see Guo Shaokong. He only saw Zhang Lili sitting on the sofa playing with her mobile phone. What about Guo Shaokong? Yi Chu asked. Suddenly someone broke in and startled Zhang Lili. When she saw that it was Yi Chu, there was disgust on her face and said with disdain, What are you doing here? Are you here to apologize to Shaokong? Let me ask you, where is Guo Shaokong? Yi Chu asked again. No comment. Zhang Lili pointed to the floor and said, If you are here to apologize to Xiao Kong, kneel here first. Cut. Yi Chu stepped forward and grabbed Zhang Lili's throat and lifted her up. What are you doing? Let me go. Let me go. Zhang Lili struggled desperately. When Bai Bing entered the ward, she happened to see this scene and said hurriedly, Yi Chu, let people go. Tell me, where is Guo Xiao Kong? Yi Chu's eyes were cold and his eyebrows were full of hostility. You let me go. Somebody. I don't know what to do. Zhang Lili shouted. Cut. Yi Chu worked harder on her wrist. In an instant, Zhang Lili could not breathe smoothly and her eyes turned white. Let me ask you for the last time, where is Guo Shaokong? If you don't tell me, I'll kill you. Yi Chu looks so ferocious that she doesn't seem to be joking at all. Bai Bing also found that Yi Chu's state at this time was very wrong and said quickly, Zhang Lili, where is Guo Shaokong? He's, he's out. Where'd it go? Shaokong said that he was bored in his room and asked the nurse to push him to the garden downstairs. Yi Chu didn't believe what Zhang Lili said and asked, why aren't you with Guo Shaokong? Shaokong won't let me accompany you. Zhang Lili is extremely aggrieved. In the morning, Guo Shaokong said that he wanted to go to the garden. Zhang Lili wanted to accompany him. Who knew Guo Shaokong suddenly lost his temper and scolded Zhang Lili. Then, Guo Shaokong refused to let Zhang Lili accompany him and insisted that the nurse push him to the garden. Zhang Lili felt aggrieved, so she had to stay on the sofa and play with her cell phone. Who knows, Yi Chu suddenly rushed in to bully her. Zhang Lili couldn't help crying any longer. Bang! Yi Chu threw Zhang Lili on the ground, turned her head and left. Yi Chu, Yi Chu, Yi Chu, stop. Bai Bing stopped Yi Chu in the corridor and asked with a cold face, what on earth happened? My mother was kidnapped. What? Bai Bing was surprised, and it was not until this time that she realized that it was no wonder that Yi Chu's mood was very wrong. It turned out that something had happened to his mother. Do you suspect it was Guo Shaokong? Bai Bing then asked. I have only Guo Shaokong as my enemy. Yi Chu is extremely sure that the kidnapping of Qian Jinglin absolutely has something to do with Guo Shaokong. There are many patients in the garden, but Guo Shaokong is not seen. This bastard must have kidnapped my mother. Yi Chu cursed angrily. Yi Chu, why don't we call the police? Bai Bing said. If Guo Shaokong really did it, then his goal is me. As long as he sees me, he will not hurt my mother. If he called the police, he might be in a hurry, which would be bad for my mother. Yi Chu then said to Bai Bing, Director Bai, please explain to Sister Lin for me. I will go and save my mother now. Do you know where your mother is? Yes, she is. Doodle before Yi Chu finished his words, the cell phone rang again and hurriedly took it out of his pocket and saw that the caller ID was the previous number. Put him through. The hoarse voice said, Yi Chu, where have you been? What the hell are you thinking? Yi Chu said angrily, don't touch my mother if you dare to come to me. If you don't tie your mother up, will you listen to me? I'm warning you, don't play games. If you call the police, I'll kill your mother right away. The hoarse voice continued, you have 15 minutes to get to the Rotten Tail building next to Joan Bay Road. If you don't see you after 15 minutes, hey, then today, it will be the anniversary of your mother's death. Are you Guo Shaokong? Yi Chu asked harshly. Hey, hey, want to know who I am, don't you know when you come? The hoarse voice sneered. Whether you are Guo Shaokong or not, I'm telling you, touch my mother, you're dead. Bang! Yi Chu hung up the phone. Bai Bing stood by, she heard the call clearly, and said to Yi Chu, it's not good to take a taxi at this time. I'll take you there. Good. It is important to save people. Yi Chu is not hypocritical. Bai Bing drove him straight to Central North Road. On the way. 
Yi Chu made a phone call to Zhao Yun. When the phone was connected, Yi Chu came straight to the point and said, Brother Zhao, I'm in some trouble. I'd like to ask for your help. Yi Chu guessed that no matter who did it, the other party must have laid a trap waiting for him and asked Zhao Yun for help, just to be on the safe side. What's happening? Zhao Yun asked. My mother was kidnapped. What? Zhao Yun was also surprised and asked, the address? In the unfinished building next to Jonbei Road, the kidnapper told me to be there in 15 minutes. I'm on my way now. Yi Chu said. Zhao Yundao, brother, you stabilize them first, and I'll be right there. Good. After hanging up the phone, Yi Chu said to Bai Bing, Director Bai, when I arrive at my destination, you will leave as soon as I get off the bus. Why? I'm afraid of danger. Then I can't leave. Bai Bing said, I'll accompany you to see the kidnappers, maybe I can help. Yi Chu took a look at Bai Bing, dressed in just the right business clothes, and sketched her figure exquisite, especially at the moment wearing a seatbelt, as if a mountain road through a high canyon, thrilling. For such a beautiful woman, if the kidnapper is seen, maybe something bad will happen. Director Bai, you listen to me. Don't go in there. I don't want you to be in danger. If you're really worried, wait for me outside, Mr. Yi said. Okay, I'll wait for you outside, but Yi Chu, you must pay attention to safety and come out quickly after rescuing your aunt. Bai Bing exhorted. Don't worry. I'll be careful. Twelve minutes later, the car drove to Middle North Road and stopped in front of a tall unfinished building. At that time, a large real estate company paid a sky-high price to buy this land and boasted that it would build the tallest building in Jiangzhou. However, in the middle of the project, the real estate company closed down and the boss ran away, leaving Jiangzhou with the biggest unfinished project. Over the years, the municipal government has been trying to find an individual company to take over the project, but in the end, it was unsuccessful for various reasons. This unfinished building has been left like this all the time. Although this building has a bit of an impact on the image of the city, it is a good place for some homeless and homeless beggars who stay here without fear of rain and sun. Early this morning, suddenly, a group of uninvited guests came to the unfinished building, all vicious, beating everyone with sticks, driving out all the beggars and tramps in the unfinished building. At this time, on the ground floor of the unfinished building, more than a dozen men stood in a row with sticks in their hands, as if they were waiting for something. Not far away, there are two people chatting. One of them is Guo Xiaokong. Guo Xiaokong sat in a wheelchair, wrapped in gauze, showing only one face outside, like a mummy. Guo Xiao, 15 minutes will be here soon. Will the boy come? The speaker was a middle-aged man in his forties with an inch of head and a terrible scar on his left face. He will come. I have the old woman. He dares not to come. Guo Xiaokong is full of confidence. Scarface glanced at Qian Jinglin, who was unconscious on the ground, flashed a touch of evil light in the fundus, and said, Guo Xiao, can you discuss something? What's it about? Guo Xiaokong stared cautiously at Scarface and asked, you don't want to raise the price, do you? I'm telling you, we agreed earlier that you would help me kill Yi Chu. I'll give you one million, not even a penny more. Guo Xiao, what are you talking about? Am I Lei Hu the kind of person who doesn't keep his word? I promised one million yuan before, but I won't ask you for a penny more when things are done. Scarface said. Guo Xiaokang was confused and asked, what do you want to discuss with me? I actually want to tell Guo Xiao that after you get rid of him later, can you leave her with me? Lei Hu pointed to Qian Jinglin who was in a coma and said. Guo Xiaokang is even more confused. Brother Lei, what do you want this old woman to do? Thunder Tiger smiled and said, I am a person with special hobbies. I am not interested in young and beautiful girls. Instead, I am a good family at this age. Guo Xiaokong only felt a moment of nausea and said secretly, this is too heavy taste. How about Guo Xiao? When you kill that kid, can you give me this woman? Thunder Tiger said, as long as this woman gives it to me, I can get 100,000 less, and you can give me 900,000. According to what I said before, I will give you 1 million when it is done, and as for this woman, I will give it to you. Thank you, Guo Xiao. But I'd like to remind you to get rid of her after playing, so as not to get into trouble. Okay. Thunder Tiger smiled. What is this place? Just then, Qian Jinglin slowly opened her eyelids and was not yet fully conscious. She remembers going downstairs to buy food, but as soon as she got downstairs, she was caught in a van by two men, and then. This is a good place. Thunder Tiger suddenly leaned up to Qian Jinglin and said. Ah. 
Qian Jinglin was frightened by the scar on Thunder Tiger's face and asked, Who are you? What do you want to do? Thunder Tiger said with a smile, Don't be afraid, it's safe here, as long as you obediently listen to me, it will be all right. Who the hell are you? Qian Jinglin asked harshly. Seeing more than a dozen men holding sticks, she had a premonition that she was in a bad situation. Old lady, don't you even know me? Guo Xiaokong turned his head and looked at Qian Jinglin coldly. Dr. Guo, Dr. Guo? How come it's you? What are you doing here? Qian Jinglin was very surprised. Why am I here? Ha, huh, that's a good question. To tell you the truth, I'm waiting for your precious son. Waiting for Yi Chu? Dr. Guo, why are you waiting for Yi Chu? Qian Jinglin didn't react for a moment. You'll see later. A ferocious light appeared on Guo Xiaokong's face. Qian Jinglin realized that something was wrong and shouted, Let me go, or I'll call the police. Call the police? Guo Xiaokong sneered with disdain. Now that you are like this, do you have a chance to call the police? Qian Jinglin's hands and feet were tied by a rope, not to mention the police, she couldn't even stand up. You kidnapped me, it's a crime, you know? Qian Jinglin shouted quietly. Yes, of course. Thunder Tiger said with a smile, it's not a crime. I won't do it yet. Qian Jinglin's heart suddenly sank, and she thoroughly understood that Guo Xiaokong came here for revenge today. Dr. Guo, it is Yi Chu's fault that Yi Chu beat you. I apologize to you. Please don't embarrass Yi Chu. I can compensate you, Dr. Guo. Compensation? You do need to pay compensation. Guo Xiaokong said ferociously, Yi Chu abandoned me last time, today, I will use his life to compensate. Qian Jinglin looked very pale and said hurriedly, Dr. Guo, don't hurt Yi Chu, I beg you. You'd better not waste your breath. You are now a mud bodhisattva crossing the river, so you can't protect yourself. Lei Hu said, went to Qian Jinglin and stared at Qian Jinglin vigorously. What do you, what do you want? Qian Jinglin asked in horror. I didn't pay attention to it before, but when I looked at it carefully just now, I found that you are actually quite beautiful. As long as you dress up a little, you will become a beautiful creature, and I can hardly help it. Thunder Tiger said with a smile, reaching out and touching Qian Jinglin's leg. Take your hands off me. Qian Jinglin screamed loudly, shrank back desperately and roared, if you dare to touch me, you will die miserably. Ha, huh, today will not be me, but your son, if you do not obey, then you will also die. At this point, Thunder Tiger made a sudden move, pinched Qian Jinglin's chin and said with a smile, I advise you to be honest, as long as you are obedient, and so solve your son, I can accompany you happy. Get out of here. Qian Jinglin was angry and slammed away the Thunder Tiger with her head. Thunder Tiger was defenseless, was knocked down by Qian Jinglin, instantly angry, got up from the ground, slapped Qian Jinglin in the face, scolded, smelly woman, unexpectedly dare to resist, do you want to die? At this time, the figure of Yi Chu appeared at the door. No, no, no. Ray, he's here. Guo Xiaokong said with a smile. Lei Hu turned his head and saw Yi Chu come in, loosened Xi'an Jinglin's hair and hummed coldly, and so on cleaned up your son, and then came to deal with you. Xi'an Jinglin saw Yi Chu and shouted in a loud voice, Chu or run, they want to kill you. Let's go. Thunder Tiger was also afraid that Yi Chu would run away. With a word of fate, the boys with sticks rushed up quickly and surrounded Yi Chu. Yi Chu ignored these people, looked at Qian Jinglin's face, and asked with concern, Mom, how are you? I'm fine. Chu -er, go, they're going to kill you. Bang! Thunder Tiger slapped Qian Jinglin in the face and cursed, shouting again, I killed you. In an instant, Yi Chu's eyes fell on Lei Hu's body and said coldly, Dare to hit my mother, you are dead. Lei Hu looked at Yi Chu and found that Yi Chu's eyes were full of endless killing, and his heart was suddenly tight. At this moment, Thunder Tiger had the illusion that he was not targeted by Yi Chu, but by an extraordinary beast. In less than two seconds, the vest was soaked in cold sweat. Then Lei Hu found it a little funny. He is just a powerless and powerless little nurse, without any background, I am afraid of what he will do. Think of this, Thunder Tiger Hey sneer, boy, I advise you to kill yourself. You can suffer less flesh. Otherwise, Guo Xiao will first waste you, and then slowly torture you to death. Until then, Yi Chu's eyes shifted to Guo Xiaokong's body, still full of murderous intention. This time, he was angry, so angry that Guo Xiaokong dared to kidnap his mother, which violated his bottom line. 
Yi Chu, I didn't think you really dared to come. Guo Xiaokong smiled easily, looking a little happy, perhaps thinking that he could get revenge soon. What on earth do you want? Yi Chu asked coldly. You're asking me what I want? Are you stupid? What else can I do if I call you here? Of course revenge. The smile on Guo Xiaokong's face gradually became ferocious and said bitterly, Yi Chu, you have broken my knees and arms. Today, I will doubly give it back to you. You think if you call a bunch of losers, you can deal with me? Yi Chu showed disdain at the corner of his mouth and paid no attention to this group of people at all. In the past, Yi Chu had only been beaten in the face of so many people, but now he has got through the governor's second pulse, and he is still confident in dealing with these punks. I don't see it. You're pretty crazy. I'd like to see how long you can be crazy. Thunder Tiger shouted, Number two, go and abolish him. At present, a young man came out of the group of thugs with sticks. He pointed at Yi Chu with a baseball bat and asked arrogantly, Where do you want me to waste you first? Is the left leg or the right leg? Or, the third leg? Ha! The other thugs burst out laughing. Yi Chu glanced at the young man and scolded, Garbage! Shit! You dare to scold me when you die. I think you're tired of living. The young man held up his baseball bat and hit Yi Chu hard on the head. Chuer! Be careful! Qian Jinglin saw this scene, tears welled up in her eyes, turned her head to one side, unwilling to see the next tragedy. However, the baseball bat suddenly stopped when it was still 20 centimeters from the top of Yi Chu's head. The young man looked intently and found that the other end of the baseball bat was grasped by Yi Chu. Yo! That was quick. The young man smiled and pulled it out hard. However, the baseball bat seems to have taken root in Yi Chu's hands, no matter how hard the young people try, they can't shake anything. With so little strength, dare to be the first to rush out as cannon fodder? Yi Chu exerted a little effort on his wrist, and he grabbed the baseball bat and hit the young man on the chest with his backhand. Bang! The young man's body flew out horizontally, smashed it more than 10 meters away vomited a mouthful of blood from his mouth, and fainted on the spot. This. There was horror in everyone's eyes. Guo Xiaokang, in particular, looked at Yi Chu like a ghost and said in shock, when did his strength become so great? Thunder Tiger's face was also gloomy. Unexpectedly, Yi Chu himself was equally shocked. With this blow just now, he used only 50% of his strength to knock the young man into a coma. If he used 100% of his strength, what would be the consequence? I'm afraid it will kill that guy. Yi Chu instantly confidence burst shed, holding a baseball bat pointing at Thunder Tiger, cold voice drink, come to die. Do you think you can change the result by knocking out one of my boys? I'm telling you, double fists are hard to beat. No matter how strong you are, you will surely die today. Then, Thunder Tiger ordered the group of thugs, saying, brothers, together, kill him. Yes. Although those thugs promised happily, none of them rushed to Yi Chu. Just now that brother was beaten by Yi Chui, which made them realize that anyone who rushes in front will certainly be like that brother just now, and even the end may be even worse. Therefore, no one wants to be the first to do so. Guo Xiaokang was a little dissatisfied and hummed coldly, Brother Lei, look at your men, a group of pussies. Guo Xiao, I don't blame the brothers. The main reason is that the kid hit too hard just now. I think we should give the brothers some encouragement. What does it mean? Thunder Tiger said that under the heavy reward, there must be a brave man. Guo Xiaokong understood and said, As long as you help me kill Yi Chu, I will give you another 10,000. For a moment, the group of punks rushed to Yi Chu as if they had taken stimulants, crying in their mouths. Closely followed, a strange scene appeared. Yi Chu took a baseball bat and smashed it. Everyone close to him was smashed, one by one like a baseball, flying out more than 10 meters away, vomiting blood into a coma. In less than three minutes, a dozen thugs fell to the ground. Guo Xiaokong was stunned. Thunder Tiger was also stunned. This is too good to fight, right? Even Qian Jinglin looked at Yi Chu with dull eyes. There was only one thought in her mind. Is this still my son? When did Chuer become so powerful? There is no one who can take a taxi. They are all useless. Yi Chu finished, pointing at the shocked Thunder Tiger with a baseball bat and asked, What's your name? Lei, Lei Hu. Thunder Tiger's voice trembled, and a feeling of uneasiness came out from the bottom of his heart. Come on, how do you want to die? Come on, how do you want to die? From the moment Thunder Tiger slapped Qian Jinglin in the face, Yi Chu had already moved his heart to kill. 
Thunder Tiger was afraid of Yi Chu in his heart, but he was very tough in his mouth and said gloomily, Boy, do you know who I am? I don't know. I don't want to know. Yi Chu Dao, touch my mother, there is only one end, and that is death. You want to kill me? Thunder Tiger suddenly smiled. Don't you know that it is against the law to make a fool of himself? Bang! Yi Chu appeared ghostly in front of Thunder Tiger and slapped him in the face. Thunder Tiger looked dull and could not believe it for a moment. He was beaten, and he was beaten by a small nurse with no background. This is just burning shame and humiliation, angry, rage. Thunder Tiger only felt that there was a burning anger in his chest, and he wanted to cut Yi Chu into thousands of pieces. Do you know who I am? Thunder Tiger roared. I have no interest in knowing who you are. I'll ask you again, how do you want to die? Yi Chu's eyes grew colder. If you want me to die, I'll kill you first. When Thunder Tiger's voice fell, he suddenly took out a cold shining dagger from his waist and pounced on Yi Chu. I have to say, Thunder Tiger moved very quickly, blinking in front of Yi Chu, while the dagger in his hand stabbed Yi Chu in the chest. Yi Chu stood still and punched out. Bang! Fist hit the dagger, only listened to a sound, the dagger broke, but Yi Chu's fist did not appear the slightest damage. This! Thunder Tiger was shocked, and it was not until now that he immediately realized that he had underestimated Yi Chu, who was even stronger than he thought. Many years ago, Thunder Tiger witnessed the use of a Tiger Master. At that time, the dagger was broken, and the fist of the Tiger Master was safe and sound. Is this kid an expert on the Tiger List? But it's too young. Thunder Tiger thought of this, turned around and ran away, trying to avoid the edge for a while. However, Yi Chu didn't give him a chance at all. He stepped forward and hit him on the shoulder with a punch. Click. Fractured shoulder blades. Ah. Thunder Tiger's mournful scream, in this quiet unfinished building, the scream appears to be very harsh, creepy. But this is just the beginning. Yi Chushin grabbed Thunder Tiger's right arm, forced 90% discount, clicked, and the right arm was broken. Bang! Yi Chu followed and kicked on the knee of Thunder Tiger, who knelt on the ground. Please, don't kill me. Don't kill me. Lei Hu begged Yi Chu for mercy with panic on his face. If I had known now, why would I have done it in the first place? Yi Chui stuck Lei Hu's neck. A moment of life and death. Thunder Tiger said loudly, If you dare to kill me, the Dragon King will not let you go. Yi Chumei wrinkled her head and asked Lei Hu, Do you know the Dragon King? I know the Dragon King. The Dragon King is my boss. Thunder Tiger said hurriedly, Little brother, what happened today is my fault. Please cut me some slack. I will make amends to you and your mother. Please. Yi Chu eyebrow wrinkled more tightly, this guy is actually under the Dragon King, things are a little difficult. If killed, it is not to give the Dragon King face, if not killed, Yi Chu is afraid of endless trouble. The last time he hit Guo Xiaokong, Lin Exquisite said that Yi Chu didn't hit hard enough, and reminded Yi Chu that Yan Wang was easy to mess with imps and asked Yi Chu to beware of Guo Xiaokong's revenge. Yi Chu didn't take it to heart at that time. I didn't expect that Guo Xiaokong would do it so quickly that in order to kill himself, he not only called people on the road, but also kidnapped his mother. Yi Chu turned around and looked at Qian Jinglin. Qian Jinglin cried and said, Chu Er, promise me that you will not do anything illegal or criminal, will you? Good. Yi Chu loosened her hand. The Thunder Tiger fell to the ground like a pile of soft mud. Yi Chu helped Qian Jinglin untie the rope on her hands and feet, and helped Qian Jinglin fix her hair. She blamed herself and said, Mom, it's all my fault. I got you into trouble. I'm fine. Qian Jinglin stood up with the help of Yi Chu. Just then, there was a rush of footsteps outside. Two seconds later, Zhao Yun appeared. Zhao Yun, dressed in black and with a cold face, was followed by four burly men. Seeing that Yi Chu and Qian Jinglin were all right, Zhao Yun breathed a sigh of relief. He followed and glanced at the whole audience. Seeing more than a dozen people dizzy on the ground, Zhao Yun was shocked and was about to speak when Thunder Tiger jumped over and knelt in front of Zhao Yun and said sadly, Mr. Zhao. Help. What's going on? Zhao Yun asked. It's him. Lei Hu pointed to Yi Chu and said to Zhao Yun, This boy knocked out all the brothers and tried to kill me. Mr. Zhao. You must save me. Zhao Yun didn't believe it at all and said, Yi Chu's small body can knock out so many of you. He did it. I saw it with my own eyes, and he broke my arm. 
Lei Hu said, Mr. Zhao, if you don't believe me, you can ask Guo Xiao. Zhao Yun glanced at Guo Xiaokong, who was pale and Lei Hu didn't know the truth, but Guo Xiaokong knew that Zhao Yun and Yi Chu had known each other for a long time, and they seemed to have a good relationship. Is the sky going to kill me? Guo Xiaokong was so frightened that he trembled slightly. Thunder Tiger did not notice this detail and was still saying to Zhao Yun, Mr. Zhao, you must save me. Bang! Zhao Yun kicked down Lei Hu. Mr. Zhao, who is this? Thunder Tiger wondered why the well-behaved Mr. Zhao kicked himself down. Zhao Yunhan said, Yi Chu is my brother, you dare to touch him, I think you do not want to live. What? Yi Chu is actually Mr. Zhao's brother. How is that possible? Isn't he an illegitimate child with no background? Lei Hu's mind was buzzing and went blank. Brother Zhao, keep an eye on them for me. I'll be right back. Yi Chu said hello to Zhao Yun and then helped Xi'an Jinglin out. Three minutes later, Yi Chu came back alone. Dude, what are you gonna do with these two guys? Zhao Yun asked. Yi Chu pointed to Thunder Tiger and said, I was ready to do it first, but he said he was one of the Dragon King's men, so I didn't kill him. Is he really one of the Dragon King's men? He didn't work for the Dragon King a long time ago. Zhao Yun explained that Thunder Tiger violated the rules of the gang and refused to change his teachings. Two years ago, he molested the woman in broad daylight and took photos. In the end, the woman was so humiliated that she jumped off a building and killed herself. Because of this, he was expelled from the gang by the Dragon King. It turns out that he is a scumbag, so if I kill him, will the Dragon King have a problem with it? Yi Chu said. There's no problem with that. Zhao Yun asked again, Brother, what are you going to do with them? Buried alive. At this point, at the top of Nanshan Mountain, several of Zhao Yun's men are trying to dig a hole with a shovel. As for Thunder Tiger, he was tied up by five flowers and knelt in front of Yi Chu to plead for mercy. Mr. Yi, please don't kill me. This is all directed by Guo Xiaokong. Guo Xiaokong said that as long as I kill your mother and son, he will give me one million. Although Thunder Tiger is five big and three thick, and has a scar on his face, he looks very fierce, but he is trembling with fear at the moment. If he tells you to eat shit, will you also eat shit? Yi Chu said coldly. Mr. Yi, as long as you cut me some slack, from now on, I will make you a cow and a horse. No, I can be your dog. Woof. Thunder Tiger barked like a dog. If you want to be my dog, you are not qualified. Yi Chu has decided to get rid of the root causes and leave no future trouble. Mr. Yi, you and your mother depend on each other. Your mother loves you so much, but have you ever thought about her? If you kill me, you will break the law, you will be punished by the law, and then you will be in prison, and your mother will be left alone. Can you bear it? Lei Hu is still making last-minute efforts, he knows that the dead point of Yi Chu is Qian Jinglin, and he wants to move Yi Chu through these words. Unfortunately, he underestimated Yi Chu's murderous intention. Whatever the consequences, I won't let you two live today. As Yi Chu spoke, he glanced at Guo Xiaokong, who was sitting in a wheelchair. Lin's exquisite words to him constantly sounded in his head. If a man wants to stand firmly, he must be ruthless. If he is soft-hearted today, it is uncertain that Guo Xiaokong and Thunder Tiger will wait for revenge in the future. Therefore, only by killing two people can the aftermath be completely solved. Kill me and you'll go to jail. Thunder Tiger said loudly, Mr. Yi, my Lei Hu's life is cheap. Is it worth paying for my life? Yi Chu sneered. Did I say that I would do it myself? Thunder Tiger was stunned. Brother Zhao, please. Yi Chu suddenly said to Zhao Yun. Zhao Yun said with a smile, It's just a trifle. You're welcome. Only then did Lei Hu understand that Yi Chu wanted Zhao Yun to kill himself. If this is the case, not only no one will know that he is dead, but Yi Chu does not have to bear any responsibility. After all, with Zhao Yun's means, it can be done without leaving any trace. However, if he died like this, he would not be reconciled. Lei Hu said to Zhao Yun, Mr. Zhao, I beg you, in the past we all work under the hands of the Dragon King, please tell Mr. Yi, cut me some slack. I promise to be a good man in the future. Later? Do people like you want to have a future? To tell you the truth, Dragon King has long wanted to deal with you. Zhao Yundao. In the past two years, the Dragon King knows everything you do like the back of your hand. Don't say far away, just say this year. In March this year, in order to help a construction group demolish, 
You forcibly evicted the demolition households. One of the old couple did not want to move out. You unexpectedly led someone to kill the old couple with an excavator. And in May, you saw a female teacher in the university town. Seeing that she was young and beautiful, you forced her. In order to prevent the female teacher from suing you, you shot a video to threaten her, and you went to her many times afterwards, so that the female teacher ended up in a mental hospital. After a month, you sang in the clubhouse, ordered a lot of high-end foreign wine, and finally had no money to pay the bill. You and your brothers made excuses to say that the foreign wine was fake, smashed the clubhouse, and blackmailed the clubhouse boss for 100,000 yuan. And Zhao Yun said more than a dozen things in one breath, all of which were done by Lei Hu. Some brothers have reported what you have done to the Dragon Wong. If it wasn't for the Dragon King who was in poor health and had no time to take care of him, do you think you would have been alive so far? Zhao Yundao. Those of us who mingle with the rivers and lakes, we should not only pay attention to rules, loyalty, but also morality. If you do more injustice, you will kill yourself. Thunder Tiger, be a good person in your next life. Thunder Tiger is cold all over, and Zhao Yun's words have made it clear that he is bound to die today. Brother Zhao, the hole is dug. Said one of his men. Thunder Tiger, are there any last words? Zhao Yun asked. Thunder Tiger smiled sadly and said, When I get to this point, I deserve it. Mr. Zhao, can you let me die a little more quickly? I don't want to be buried alive. Zhao Yun looked at Yi Chu, saw that Yi Chu had no objection, nodded and said, Okay, I promise you. Thank you. Thunder Tiger closed his eyes and was ready to die. Zhao Yun took out a dagger and waved his right hand. The dagger cut through Thunder Tiger's throat. Poof! In an instant, Thunder Tiger was killed. Buried. Zhao Yun said expressionlessly. Yes. Several men threw the body of Thunder Tiger into the pit and buried it quickly. Wo Xiaokong sat aside, pretending to be calm. He thought Yi Chu was just scaring him, but after seeing the scene of Thunder Tiger being killed, he was afraid. Help! Help! Guo Xiaokong yelled at his throat. Bang! Zhao Yun slapped Guo Xiaokong in the face and cursed impatiently. What are you yelling about? In this wilderness, even if you shout through your throat, no one will come to save you. Guo Xiaokong finally couldn't help begging Yi Chu for mercy. Yi Chu, I was wrong. Would you please don't kill me? I'll give you back Zhang Lily, and I can ask my father to give you the place in the hospital. As long as you don't kill me, I can give you whatever you want. I'm begging you. Buried. Yi Chu didn't say a word of nonsense and directly told Zhao Yun's men to bury Guo Xiaokong alive. Soon, Guo Xiaokong, with a wheelchair, was thrown into the pit. Yi Chu, don't kill me. I was wrong. I dare not fight with you again. Please don't kill me. Guo Xiaokong cried, tears and snot mixed together, embarrassed to the extreme. Guo Xiaokong, farewell. Yi Chu smiled and waved, and then told Zhao Yun's men to bury it slowly so that he could experience the fear of death. Yes. Several of Zhao Yun's men slowed down the filling. Guo Xiaokong struggled to climb out of the pit, but his injuries didn't heal and he didn't have any strength at all. After a while, the soil was filled up to his neck, leaving only one head exposed. Yi Chu, give me a break. I beg you. I don't want to die. I haven't married a wife. I still want a son. I want your horse. I won't let you go even if I'm a ghost. Wo Xiaokong's face suddenly became ferocious, a roar of resentment. Come to me after being a ghost, and I will make you crazy. When she entered the door, she saw the gauze wrapped around Qian Jinglin's wrist and hurriedly asked, Mom, how are you? I'm fine. I have a little skin wound. Director Bai has taken care of it for me. Qian Jinglin then asked, Chuer, are you alright? I'm fine. Yi Chu cast a grateful look at Bai Bing and said, Director Bai, thank you. You're welcome. Yi Chu told Qian Jinglin, Mom, no matter who asks, you will say that you have not seen Guo Xiaokong today, do you know? Chuer, what's going on? Tell me, did you do something against the law? Qian Jinglin is very nervous. Mom, don't be paranoid. In short, if anyone asks, you can do as I say. Okay. Qian Jinglin nodded and seemed to have a lot on her mind. Although Yi Chu did not say clearly, Qian Jinglin vaguely felt that something great must have happened. By the way, Director Bai told me just now that you should be transferred back to surgery and continue to work as a probationary doctor. You should do a good job and strive to become a regular worker as soon as possible, but you must not fail Director Bai. Don't worry, I'll do a good job. Mom, 
Can I take you back now? You go to work. I can go back by myself. Qian Jinglin smiled and said to Bing, Director Bai, I'm sorry to trouble you today. You're welcome, Auntie. Go back and have a rest early. Yes. Director Bai, I'll see my mother off. I'll be right back. Yi Chu kept taking Qian Jinglin to the door of the hospital. While waiting for a taxi, Qian Jinglin told Yi Chu and Chuer that there are many ways to solve problems in the world, and extreme measures are not necessary. If they must be used, they must not leave any trace. Also, if you are in trouble, you must tell me that no matter when, my mother will protect you even if she gives her life. Qian Jinglin's eyes were firm and her body showed a calm and calm temperament. Yi Chu was stupefied for a moment, and it was the first time for him to see this temperament from Qian Jinglin, which was a bit strange. Mom, why are you asking? Yi Chu looked puzzled. Qian Jinglin said, I think Director Bai is good, beautiful and in good shape, or the director of surgery. Why don't you try to pursue her? What, you want me to pursue Director Bai? Yi Chu was so surprised that his eyes almost fell out, and he dared not even think about this kind of thing. Who is Bai Bing? She is the director of surgery of Jianzhou Hospital, MD, the iceberg goddess in the hearts of countless people. He is just a powerless and powerless probationary doctor, to pursue his own boss, crazy? Qian Jinglin said, I think director Bai is very good. Although she looks cold on the outside, she is actually warm-hearted, careful and kind-hearted, and I have observed carefully that her figure will definitely give birth to a son. Dizzy. Yi Chu was a little speechless and said, Mom, do you know who is pursuing director Bai? Either the rich second generation or the second official generation, all young, rich and talented. They all failed to catch up with Director Bai, do you think I can do it? I think you can. Mom has faith in you. Qian Jinglin said, I am a woman, I can feel it, Director Bai looks at you differently. Why is it different? I can't say anything specific. Anyway, I can feel that she has a crush on you. Qian Jinglin said with a smile, if only Director Bai could be my daughter-in-law. Mom, I advise you to give up this idea. Regardless of educational background, age, family background and social status, Director Bai and I are not suitable. How do you know it's not appropriate if you don't even get along with Director Bai? I'm telling you. Mom, the car is coming, please go back. Yi Chu hurriedly helped Qian Jinglin into the taxi. Chuer, you should pay attention to this matter. I'm sure you can do it. Qian Jinglin is already in the car, still encouraging Yi Chu. All right, I get it. Please go back. Watching the taxi go far away, Yi Chu felt helpless. What's wrong with mom today? She asked me to pursue Director Bai without looking at it. How can I be worthy of Director Bai? But to tell you the truth, Director Bai, a beautiful woman like a fairy, would be worth her death if she could be caught up with. Yi Chu came to the office of the chief of surgery. When I came in, I saw Bai Bing drinking water. At this time, the white ice took off his white coat, revealing a tight professional suit. Perhaps the figure was too good. The shirt was stretched open, from Yi Chu's point of view, you can just see a piece of amber like light. It's so white. As soon as the word appeared in Yi Chu's mind, Bai Bing's eyes swept over and asked coldly, What are you looking at? Yi Chu's face turned red and hastened to hide that he didn't see anything. Bai Bing took a suspicious look at Yi Chu, sat down in the office chair and said, I have said hello to the medical department. You will go through the formalities later and transfer back to the department. Yes. You go out first. Bai Bing finished and looked down at the medical record. Yi Chu was in a daze. He thought Bai Bing would ask about Guo Xiaokong. Who knew Bai Bing didn't mention it, as if nothing had happened? What a surprise. Yi Chu hurried to the medical department to finish the formalities, and then went to find Lin Jing. He felt that he still had to tell Lin Jing about the transfer from the nurse's post. Although I haven't known Lin Jingjing for a long time, Lin Jingjing was good to him and taught him a lot of lessons in life, especially when dealing with Guo Xiaokong this time. If it wasn't for what Lin Jingjing said, remind him like a wake-up call. Yi Chu would not have been so decisive. In the distance, Yi Chu saw two bodyguards in black suits and black sunglasses standing at Lin's exquisite ward door, just like two door gods, motionless. I don't know who came to see Sister Lin, but it seems that it has a long history. Yi Chu muttered and came to the door of the ward. Unexpectedly, he was stopped by two bodyguards. Money always has orders, no one is allowed to enter. Said one of the bodyguards. I'm a doctor. Please get out of the way. Yi Chu is quite polite. 
Boss Qian ordered that no one is allowed to enter. Even if you are the director of this hospital. Get out of here. Another bodyguard drank to Yi Chu impolitely. Yi Chu frowned and was about to speak when suddenly, a woman scolded in the ward, Lin Exquisite, you bitch. Bang. Followed, there was a clear slap in the face. Move out of my way. Yi Chu Chang said two bodyguards. Are you deaf? I told you to piss off. If you don't go, be careful to be rude to you. The two bodyguards spoke badly and their faces glowed ferociously. For the last time, get out of the way right now, or don't blame me for being impolite. Yi Chu's voice suddenly became very cold. Unexpectedly, the two bodyguards laughed when they heard what he said. Be rude to us? Ha, huh, who do you think you are? Thin as a telephone pole, do you still want to fight with us? Bang! Before a bodyguard had finished speaking, he was knocked unconscious by Yi Chui. Another bodyguard reacted very quickly and hurriedly kicked a whip at Yi Chu. Yi Chu turned slightly to the side, dodged the attack, grabbed the bodyguard's leg, pulled hard into his arms, and the bodyguard suddenly lost his center of gravity and fell to the ground. Boom! Yi Chu kicked the bodyguard like lightning and walked quickly into the ward. As soon as I entered the door, I saw a woman in Chang Sam and heavy makeup standing on the edge of the hospital bed. The woman is in her early forties, dressed in jewelry, carrying a limited edition Herm ES bag in her left hand and pointing at Lin in her right hand. You bitch. If it wasn't for you, my brother would have died so miserably. My brother loves you so much that he wants to marry you even if he breaks with the family, but you poisoned him. Lin is exquisite. Are you still human? Do you have any conscience? Yi Chu also roughly understood what was going on. Bai Bing said that Lin Jing had a fiancé who was poisoned to death by Lin Jing. It seems that this woman should be the sister of Lin's exquisite fiancé. Yi Chu took another look at Lin's delicacy and saw Lin sitting on the hospital bed with a bright red fingerprint on his left face. Do not know why, see her like this, Yi Chu's heart unexpectedly appeared the feeling of heartache. Lin Jing, do you think you can feel better if you poison my brother? Don't think that I don't know what you have done in Jiangzhou in the past few years. A woman has built such a big group and climbed a lot of men's beds, right? Do you know what those people in Beijing say about you? They say you are a pussy and don't obey the way of a woman. I think they are quite polite. If you ask me, you are a chicken. For a moment, Lin Exquisite looked up, stared coldly at the woman with heavy makeup and said, Qian Yanru, if it were not for you being Qian Dong's sister, I would never let you walk out this door alive today. What, you want to poison me like Qian Dong? Women sneer. Lin is exquisite, you think too highly of yourself, even if you also want to kill me, it is a pipe dream. Not to mention that you have broken a leg, even if you are in good health. Can you kill me? I almost forgot. You broke a leg. If I avenge Qian Dong now, you should have no backhand. There is a strong killing opportunity on the woman's face, step forward, close to the hospital bed. What do you want to do? Lin asked in a delicate cold voice. I want to avenge Qian Dong. The woman finished and grabbed Lin's exquisite neck with her hands. Stop it. Yi Chu shouted loudly. The woman let go of her hands in fear. Although she wanted to avenge her own brother, she never killed anyone. She did it for the first time. She was very nervous and guilty. Who are you? The woman asked hurriedly. I'm wearing this white coat. Who do you think I am? Yi Chu kept a straight face and said in a quiet voice, How decent is it to be noisy in the ward? The woman's face was blue and white, and her eyes almost burst with fire. Who is she? When did a little doctor dare to yell at her? Do you know who I am? After saying this, the woman suddenly felt very stupid. If the little doctor knew who she was, would she dare to talk to herself in this tone? I'm telling you, I'm. No matter who you are, don't make any noise here, let alone hurt my patients. Yi Chu said with a serious face. You, please get out. You're kicking me out? The woman stared so wide that she looked at Yi Chu like a monster. Why didn't he think that the little doctor dared to drive her out? This is the intensive care ward. The hospital has regulations. Idle people are not allowed to enter. Although I don't know how you got in here, as a doctor in this hospital, I have the right to kick you out. Yi Chu went on to say, please go out at once, otherwise, I will call the security guard to blow you up. The woman was almost furious, pointing to Yi Chu and scolding angrily, even a small doctor dares to bully me, you are finished. You're screwed. Dragon and tiger, why don't you get your ass in here? The woman shouted out the door. 
In the past, when she was in trouble, the two bodyguards would show up as soon as possible to help her solve the problem. But today, this little doctor is catching up with himself. Why hasn't a long ahu come in yet? Is it possible that they haven't recovered from the trouble for a long time last night? In short, women are very unhappy. Are you calling those two bodyguards at the door? If so, they should not come in. Yi Chu warned. What do you mean? Just go out and see for yourself. The woman ran out in a hurry. Yi Chu asked Lin Jing, Sister, are you alright? I'm fine. Lin's exquisite face managed to squeeze out a smile. I'm glad it's okay. I'm still. Before Yi Chu had finished his words, the woman rushed in from the outside and pointed to Yi Chu and said, Did you do it? What are you talking about? Yi Chuming asked knowingly. Lin Jingjing did not know that the woman's two bodyguards were knocked unconscious by Yi Chu and were confused by the conversation between the woman and Yi Chu. You know what I'm talking about. The woman glared angrily at Yi Chu and asked, Why did you knock out my bodyguard? Yi Chu said with a smile, So they are your bodyguards. I thought they were two watchdogs. You. You really want to die. How dare you do that to my bodyguard, me, me. I see. The woman suddenly showed a look of sudden enlightenment, pointing to Lin's exquisite drink, is it you? Did you order this kid to knock out two of my bodyguards? Lin is exquisite, how dare you bully me, I will fight with you. The woman pounced on Lin's delicacy like crazy. However, she was slapped away by Yi Chu before she came near the hospital bed. Yi Chu said coldly, I never hit a woman, but you are an exception. 